Hello, and welcome, friends. Man, that looked like it redlined. Is everything cool? Is it too loud? Is it crazy? Eh, it should be fine. How's the music, guys? What's up? Global Sports Card Investor, Broad Street Puck. How you guys doing? Base Card Collector, JJ Bama. Is that like Alabama? You good? All right, cool. What's up, Pink Lady? How you doing? All right, we're going to go to the main screen which is the card pack screen. Now, I gotta just tell you guys, uh, the lighting in here causes the camera to kind of blur and act a little bit weird, and I just figured it would be cool to come on here and chill with y'all while I was kind of going through this stuff and getting ready for PSA anyway, because I'm about to submit a, a big-ass, bulk-ass type order of uh, various sorts. I mean, this whole stack right here is is literally Jared Allen. You guys know I got a man-bro-mance type with, with Jared, and this is the Jared Allen stack. So we got all kinds of Jared Allens, but we'll get to some more interesting stuff for you guys. This is the stack that you're going to want to see right here. This is the stack that's got some flavor, you know what I mean? We got some 88 Fleer. We got all kinds of weird shit in here. And then this stack is all hockey, but it's got a lot of good stuff too. Whoa, was that, did that lag? Why is it all laggy? What is this? Damn, the camera's like, la it, it very strange very strange you like the headband yeah he's got this like smooth i don't even know what to call it like vintage 70s look like i expect him to be in a funk band with bootsy or something mm -hmm. so how the hell are you guys this evening that's the real question if you guys watched that's just on my end all right cool if you guys watched that um I'm just not going to sweat it. If you guys watched that video today, we did have some cool, cool stuff. I really like those Jam City inserts. I went and bought up a few here and there. I'm going to try to get some graded if we get lucky and get some in good condition. Yo, what's good, Jordan Hudson? How the hell are you? So I'm going to turn this light on. It's going to be real bright. Uh, you guys just try not to... I mean, this is the lamp, the magnifying glass lamp. Uh, so I'm going to need this to basically check out the cards and, and whatnot. So we're going to start... Let me actually see if I can put this over here <clears throat> if the volume ends up not being good let me know i'm a mother angel all right uh pokemon hunting yo have any of you guys tried nba top shot speaking of pokemon hunting so yeah the first thing i'm gonna do is go by a set essentially and i'm gonna look for you know any sort of back issues centering whatever else i'm gonna see who's got a bad back i'm looking for somebody in a wheelchair type but let me ask you guys a question, and I want you to give me your honest opinion. These are both 2017 Jared Allen rookies. Which one do you think is a better looking card? Forget the fact that, that Prism is more uh, expensive. Look at this card, right? I know the light is kind of whack, but, but look at that card. Pretty good looking, not bad. Looks kind of like a tuxedo, maybe some Contra type shit, like he's about to lay down and laser somebody in the face. What was that? Right, I get that, but I've already explained that to people that, like, I just kind of have to deal with that. What? Huh? Can you twist it just a little bit different? I can't, because I'm going to need to use it. I'm, I'm an angel. I, I know, but it's it, it can't be perfect. You know what I mean? It can't be perfect. I mean, I could... It just is... It's not going to... It's so bright that, like, no matter what I do, it's not going to go... Uh, uh, it's not going to go away. <laughs> I mean, I can't... Yeah, because then it defeats the purpose of me having the light. I mean, anyway, uh, the light makes me feel like I'm being interrogated. You might be. You might be. So just keep it cool, man. You know what I mean? Keep it cool. What's up, Caesar? How you doing? Cop that eight in Prism Rookie for stupid low. Yeah, man, I found one today for 17 bucks. And, uh, you know, I think they're good in that point. Uh, you know, there's there's a lot of people selling them for more expensive. Yeah, that's the wife. The wife. All right, there we go, guys. There's the Jared Allen uh, prism. And then here is the select. Now, you trying to tell me in, in, in earnest, you're trying to tell me that you prefer prism to select. I mean, select always just has something better going on. It looks more prestigious. I mean, look at how prestigious his name looks. Like, this is the type of shit you find at a banquet, and this is the type of shit you find at a bank. That's the difference. You know what I mean? So, yeah, we're going to go through here. Oh, I'm going to have to bring that crazy light back. Maybe I could just, I don't know, just try to do my, my best about it, really. But, yeah. Man, I'm about to have to turn this camera off. Looking crazy around here. 
You got it for 12 bucks? Yo, congratulations on that pickup, dude. 12 bucks is, is awesome price for that. So yeah, let me see how many I've got here that look like they're gradable, and then we'll kind of move on. Uh, I also have these cool red and blue kind of dual prism weirdo looking guys. Those are pretty cool. And then I also have some of the, well, I have a, a silver a silver select I paid like $4 for, something like that. The Jared, I mean, honestly, Jared Allen's cards are just dirt cheap. They've gone up a, a few bucks, just like a little bit. Uh, but not much. And then I got these prism mosaics. I'm not really sure if this is going to be a thing, but this is the first year that they did mosaic before mosaic came out as a standalone set, 2017 style. So I think these are pretty cool and they have that whole like, you know, fancy looking prism thing going on. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to just see what we can find. If you guys have any questions, anything you want to talk about, you know, I, I'm sorry if the screen isn't as stimulating as it could be, but I just thought it would be kind of, kind of cool to come on here and, and chill out with you guys while I was doing this. I figured we're all doing the same shit. Might as well come hang out. So, yeah, the first thing I'm going to look for is I'm going to look for corners and edges that don't look good. Uh, if you have a low-end rookie card, you're going to want it to have the ability to get a PSA 10. As you get older in the cards, they get more vintage and they get higher priced, then you can have a little bit more wear because a, a lower grade will yield higher value. But if you have a rookie card, something that you're not necessarily gambling on, but um, you know one that it may not go past like a $50 card if it hits a 10, and then if it hits a 9, you're just looking at like a raw price, you really want to be able to hit that 10. So it's it's really important to check the back, look for wear around the edges, look for scratches, surface issues. What's up, card collector? How you doing, man? So that's what we're doing now. And uh, this one kind of has a dinged corner on the bottom left and the right, so I, I wouldn't send that one in. And those will end up just either I'll distribute them through the eBay store that we have, or I'll just keep them until they go up or until I decide, hey, I, I can't stay with this dude anymore. I got to bounce. This is a bad relationship. I'm out of here, man. Bottom right corner on this one has a, a bit of a dingity ding look to it. Ding a dong. So we're going to have to bounce off on that one. Thoughts on CGC getting into sports cards? I think it'll be good, man. You need to do your homework after game one of the World Series? Damn, homework. Man, even when I was in school, I didn't do my homework. Didn't do anyone else's either. But uh, yeah, CGC getting into sports cards I think is a good thing. I think that they're going to have access to quality graders. They're not just going to hire no schmucks off the street, so to speak. And I think they have a, a credibility uh, because they deal with comic books, and it's not that much different. I mean, you can obviously go from being expert comic book grader to expert card grader in a pretty short period of time, I would assume. Maybe that's not 100% correct, but yeah. This one, a little bit of edge wear down on the bottom, too. I'm really looking for perfection here. You checked out the Big Shots inserts in that same set? Uh, no, I haven't. I'm going to have to, though. I like inserts. I don't think they get enough love. This one's got a, kind of a weird edging to it, and the corner is dinged. Uh, yes, I would have to move, and I would move, too. I would be out of here real quick. The only way I wouldn't move is if I thought that California was either going to burn down or the price was too expensive to live you know, that sort of thing, or it was just riddled with drugs, gangs, and prostitutes. I mean, if that kind of shit happened, I probably wouldn't move, but otherwise, <laughs> we're home sailing, baby. Do you do any baseball? I do do some baseball. Not as much as the other sports, but I definitely pick up baseball uh, whenever I can, when it's good. I, I prefer vintage baseball uh, to modern baseball, but I I'm into it. But I, I really do like basketball and hockey better. Football and baseball are kind of to a lesser extent for me. Basketball is my main, and hockey is just kind of the second. This one looks like it's going to pass the preliminary. Uh, there's a tiny bit of wear on the bottom, but it doesn't seem like it's that much. It's not an actual ding. It's just kind of the natural edge of the card. This one I can actually see two dings, so I'm going to pass on that. If I want to get stuff graded, you think I should do a group sub or buy a membership? The membership is cheaper, but I heard it's more time. It's a little bit more time, but I'll tell you what comes with it. Certainty. You know it's your card going in. You know that everything that's involved with it is your fault. If something goes wrong, you can only be upset with yourself. And, you know, it's, it's really 
interesting to me how these people have some sort of confidence in other people. I mean, I know that there's a few that have good reputations and, you know, that's okay, but why pay them an extra five bucks just to do the same shit you're going to do? If they're getting cards back faster, then that's PSA's fault and that's not something that should happen. If I'm just Johnny Q Home Slice and I send them a, a rack of cards and pay them 20 bucks a piece and then fucking uh, Johnny whatever his name is over here sends them the same rack of cards but he, you know, charged us 25 a piece and he sent 700, uh, excuse me, 700 of them versus just 20, we should have the cards back at the same time, roughly. It shouldn't be some situation where I get my cards back in eight months, and he gets his back in five, and he gets to go tell more people, hey, you can just deal with me. You'll get your cards back three months faster. It's not right. It's not acceptable. Uh, and it shouldn't be the case. That one's not going to fly either. And even though this looks like a lot of cards, it won't actually take that long, because as soon as you find a flaw in the card, uh, you can pretty much bounce from its ability to hit a 10, and it's not something you're going to consider sending in. So I would consider this one thus far. You really want to take a look at the surface. Like there's a ding on that surface. Kind of looks unnatural to the card. So we're going to pass on that. So as you can see, out of the 10 Jared Allens I had for Prism, uh, none of them are really going to go to PSA to hit that tasty 10. And then we're going to have to check out the surface on the front. Oh, there's a, a little faint scratch right there. Just the faintest mark, but they're looking at this with magnifying glasses and all kinds of crazy shit. So I don't think that would hit better than a 9. So until a 9 is worth like 180 bucks or 150 bucks, I'm probably not going to do it. Well, Alright, you can find some real sweet Tracy McGrady rookies in the same set. Right, right, I got you. Uh, the theory is that PSA grades easier on bulk submitters and turns card around faster because they're a better customer. Who knows if that's really the case. I've been on those Jam City inserts for a month now. Dude, like I said, I bought a collection a while ago, and I found a, a Sean Kemp and a Gary Payton, and I thought they were super attractive, but I hadn't really, you know, gone in on trying to buy a bunch of them. But lately, I was just looking for some more sweet cards since there's so many nice inserts out there. And I was like, well, what are we missing? I know we've got to be missing something just because there's so many good cards out there uh, to choose from. I also found a few other sets that are interesting. They actually have a, a subset called Smooth. It really only has like Tim Duncan and maybe Allen Iverson. I think it's some mid 90s Fleer or something, but it's 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 called Smooth. And at the bottom of the card, it's actually pretty smooth. And then there's another one called NBA Hoop Stars, which is a hoop insert, and those are pretty scarce. And again, uh, part of the problem here is that there's no population on PSA. And this stuff did not get submitted at the time because basketball was not popular, so it's very difficult to get it in high grade. So if you can actually find them, hunt them down, and you know start sending them in, there's a pretty good chance that you're going to have some exclusivity in the market if you hit a high grade on some of them. Gold bolts, yeah, yeah, that's what's up. We got the... We got a bunch of Braden points. That's one of the things about hockey that I love is that, you know, since the market is so young guns oriented, and I know there's some higher uh, quality stuff that people get breaks or whatever, I really think that Platinum and Allure are underpriced in the market. I mean, if you look at the, you know, even like a guy like Pedersen and his young guns rookies like 70 bucks or something, and then you look at his, you know, uh, Platinum rookie, and the Platinum rookie is like six bucks. I mean, it's going to happen at some point that that is going to shift. What up, attack button? I've been having bad luck with an edge or a touched corner when sorting. A touched corner? You mean like you touched it? Man, you can't touch the corner. What is this, dude? Thing about group submissions is that some say they're more favorable on grading due to the volume they send. Uh, it shouldn't be the case. I mean, the, they can't be favorable. Like, in theory, you can say that. But in reality, the cards go to an independent grader. And the grader doesn't know where the card came from. He doesn't know if it was in a bulk submission. The people that prepare the order and take the cards out and research them and get them all ready, then it goes to the graders. And the graders don't know where the hell the card came from. They just know they got a bunch of cards on their desk that they got a grade. So, there, I mean, I, I hear that in theory, but I think in practice that that can't be the case. I mean, I'm not really sure exactly what it is. If there's actual, uh, you know, sample size to sort of look at these things and find facts, but I would venture to say that there's not much to it if we saw a, a higher percentage of sample size. This is a cool one, but the, the corner definitely has a little bit too much wear. But I do like that Jared Allen, very flashy type. They remind me of Net Marvel. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. They're pretty cool. I, I like them. And uh, I think they go with that kaboom, that comic book. Yo, what's up, Bark? How you doing? How many Magical Johnsons do you have? All kinds, man. Pound that like button. Yeah, that's what's up. Pound that like button. Oh, and not to do much selfless uh, promoting, but I did start a Patreon page in case you guys want to get involved with that and support the stream. What's up, Carson? How you doing, man? And uh, I wanted to give back to the people that were supporting. So part of the Patreon is uh, obviously you're going to get information early, like whatever guys are going to be in the videos or whatever. But at the 9.99 mark, what I'm doing is I've started a Discord channel, and the Discord channel is only for Patreon members at 9.99 or above. And you guys are getting access to deals that I find on eBay that I don't want for whatever reason. Like earlier today, I found a Scotty Pippen that was in near mint condition for like 35 bucks and it looks like the guy accepted offers. So I dropped that in the chat and somebody went after it because we've already got three patrons and that's fantastic. So if you're one of those three, thank you very much for that support. That's dope. So yeah, uh, I think that, you know, even if you guys peel one deal that I find or whatever, uh, you know, that's probably going to make you more money than you're investing in that 10 bucks. So I figured it was like a nice two-way street. I get a little something-something for time and, and, you know, content, and then you guys can get a nice deal somewhere along the line, potentially. And the reason why I didn't want that Scotty Pippen is because I already have some going to grading, and, you know, you just got to allocate funds somewhere else. I don't want 10 Scotty Pippins to grade. I want to get some of the cards I have back from PSA right now. I literally have 300 cards there. You found nine macaronis in your common boxes a few nights ago. Yo, James, what's up, man? That's awesome. Ming, will you be doing any baseball card updates? The market kind of fell over and got kicked. Now everybody's scraping Rosa Reina out of the junk piles. Um, you know, maybe, maybe not. To be honest with you, I think basketball is my sweet spot. I really like basketball and hockey. Uh, so I'll probably be focusing on basketball and then just mix the others in as they make sense. So if I come across a nice collection of baseball cards, then you're certainly going to hear about it. But if that doesn't happen, then, you know, it kind of depends. I'll, I'll mix it up, but I won't focus on it specifically. This one's not too bad, to be honest with you. Uh, it seems like there's a, nah, that, that corner is probably not going to make the cut. And that was for another one of these Jared Allens. Let me see about these guys on the back. But yeah, a Rosarena is funny. Uh, I did have a Prism rookie card with an autograph that I sold for 50 bucks, essentially. Yeah, that one's got a little bit of wear on it. The orange one. Ding on the bottom there. What you gonna say to me, Jarrett? You got something to say to me? A little ding there. Baseball doesn't make sense right now. You need a stimulus to jumpstart your sales. <laughs> what do you mean, man? You mean you're selling them on eBay? Do you have any 86 Fleer Jordan cards? No, but we've sold four of them. One base and three stickers in the last year. This is a nice Jared Allen 2017 Select Silver. Ah, oh, the corner's got a little bit of wear on it. That couldn't grade it. Couldn't make the case for grading it. No, well, on we go, guys. On we go. <clears throat> do you buy anything you can make money on, or do you mainly buy Prism or Optic or Select? Uh, I mean, at the end of the day, the name of the game is make money. So if I think that I can invest and then you know, flip that card in five months, I'm in. If I think that it's, I mean, it really depends on where I'm at. Uh, you know, if I have a lot out, like let's say my bankroll is mostly invested in PSA right now, I'm not making any big purchases. So if I thought a card was really good at the three or $400 price mark, I might not buy like five of them. I might just buy one or I might pass the deal to the homies in the chat uh, or whatever type of a deal. So it really kind of depends. But generally, if it's something that I can make money on and it makes sense, then I'm in and I prefer prism and select uh, yeah prism select or optic are all good I personally prefer select but if the market wants prism and they want to pay for it then I'll just take the select and and stash it at home I think one of the best things that you can do and uh, by the way Zucker man thank you very much appreciate that man a breath of fresh air into the hobby man my, my, my wife would be real happy about that a breath of fresh air she never gets that it always smells like hot dogs or beef so um what do you think about Mosaic? I don't really like Mosaic, Matt. I think that Mosaic is okay, but it feels to me like there's too many of those types of sets on the market. So you have to think about what's going to happen the next year. Are you going to go after Optic, Select, Prism, and then Mosaic? 
Like I'm, I'm just not as into the mosaic as I am the other things. This one's not going to cut the mustard either. Yeah, a little bit of wear on these bottom corners, but they're still pretty nice. <laughs> uh, got a David Wright 101 currently bid to 177. Well, that doesn't sound bad, dude. Yeah, archives retired autos. Right, right, right. Vintage is always going to be good. And uh, people are going to lose their minds when Prism Football drops next month. Yeah, exactly. And it's so insane because you have to get lucky to profit from opening product. I don't think people realize that. That like, if you look at your total spend versus what you're getting out of it, unless you get lucky, you're losing money. Like, yeah, you can get things graded, wait six months. It really just depends on how you can sort of manage all of that. You know, if you have just like all of your bankroll into one thing, you're probably in rough shape. And I don't really, I mean, I obviously everybody enjoys opening product. That's the biggest gamble of it all. But I like the days when you could get a nice team for 50 bucks, national treasures. I love national treasures. I'd like to pick more of it up. But the prices are insane these days. The corners on these are all a little rough, guys. That's why we're going through these pretty quickly. This one's not too bad, though. There might be a shot for this one. I'm going to check that one out. And this one's not too bad either, so I'll probably have to check that out. Mosaic, too many surface issues. Yeah, but I mean, I, I just, I don't know, Carson, I'm just not really into Mosaic. I, I think it's okay. What do you think about Lucas Select Rookie Card Base? You think it'll get back up? The pop is very low. Uh, I mean, it'll probably go back up when interest kicks back in, you know what I mean? That's generally how it goes, and it might have that higher floor right now than it did before, and then it'll go back up, and then it'll have that floor again. It really depends. The thing that I worry about with all these modern cards is that there's tons and tons and tons of them. So let's say that you had a, a PSA 9 Luca, and then you had like a PSA 8 Eddie Murray rookie card, and you know the attention was about the same on them. Which one do you think is a safer 8-year play? Let's just pretend that Luca continues to be a good player. Which card would you rather have in eight years and you had to pick the card right now and just put it in a cryogenic stasis? Would you pick the Eddie Murray or would you pick the Luca? Because I'll tell you what, Eddie Murray rookie card PSA 8 is not very likely to suddenly go from a 3K pop count to a 20K pop count. But every day somebody gets those Lucas graded and graded and graded. And if the demand stays about the same and that Luca it just creeps up, it's going to keep those prices the same and it's going to eventually tank them a little bit even if he's awesome, because the higher population count is going to take effect and erode the value over time. So I'm not saying it's 100% on every card. I'm just saying that I would be careful with modern cards because having a big, expensive card is very dangerous long-term considering the fact that everyone is grading everything they get their damn hands on. And those print runs are pretty savage. So I would be careful, guys. I think that there's a lot of value to be made in the short-term and in the mid-term, but I think if you're just specifically buying a card and holding it for the duration of its existence... You know, unless you really enjoy that card and it means something to you, be careful because those modern pop counts are just willing to just go crazy. So that's 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 my opinion anyway. Could be wrong. Spectra cars are underrated. Yeah, I like Spectra. I think they're pretty good, honestly. I think they're pretty attractive. So yeah, these Jarrett's are not bad. Let's see what the surface looks like. Yo, what's up, Jared? How you doing, man? What's up, man? What are you doing over there? Oh man, is, there, is that is that the, like, the way that the card is? If I can match that little shadow on this one, then I'll know it's on the card. Okay, it is, it is. It's the actual card. Surface on this one looks extremely clean. Corners are sharp. Doesn't seem to be any, any fuss or, or guff. And uh, one of the things that you guys want to use when you're getting these things ready is a microfiber cloth. Microfiber cloth will help you clean the surface off so that you don't have to send these in with fingerprints that are just going to automatically get you a 9. There's a lot of traps when it comes to getting cards graded, and, and the whole fingerprint trap is one thing you want to avoid. Are you speculating on Jarrett Allen having a big season? Well, I'm more so speculating on the attention that Durant and Kyrie Irving are going to bring the Brooklyn Nets. 
because one, I think that they're going to have a lot of attention on them at the beginning of the season, and people are going to be looking for them to come out of the gate swinging, win a bunch of games. But two, I do think that Jared Allen is an exceptional talent. If you've ever watched a video, if you've ever seen him play, if you've ever heard the man talk, you know, I'm, I'm in. I'm a believer in Jared Allen. This one actually has a surface issue on the front, which I can't really justify sending in. So the lone Jared Allen so far. So I think Jared Allen's cards are in a really good position because he's on Durant and Kyrie's team. They're going to have a lot of attention. He's the starting guy getting most of the minutes. Uh, he's a fantastic rim uh, protector. And I think that he has the ability to put up big games. And he might even be a better scorer than Kyrie Irving at some point. But nonetheless, he can create excitement uh, in big games. And, you know, block shots, fancy shit popping off. And I think he's got an opportunity as a big man. And there is some outside shot that they decide to not pay him the $3.9 million that they owe him. And he goes to another team to play a bigger role somewhere. Uh, you know, and who knows exactly what's going to happen in the free agency. But that's that's a, the situation. So I'm in on Jared Allen, which is why I have a massive stack of them. Also got this. Uh, that's just like your standard base one. Yeah, a little bit of wear on the back of that. You know, I'll tell you what, guys. Uh, the different, the different uh, rated rookie. Let's say you go uh, Donruss base, and then you go Optic. You can just kind of scale up. If you don't have a big bankroll, you can still get in on a lot of rookie cards, just getting paper Donruss, getting them graded, and building your bankroll that way. Because a lot of these will still, there's a really big disparity between paper Donruss PSA 10 and then raw. So if you get a raw, it's probably like five to eight bucks. Even Tyler Harrow is like ten dollars, but the graded one is you know like one fifty or something. In a lot of cases, so you have a very good multiplier uh, versus the actual price you're paying. Love the buyback autos. My favorite thing to open. Uh, let's see what we got here. Microfibers don't last forever. Uh, I put a scratch down my Chrome Kyle Lewis. Yeah, I always test it first. Chuma OKK Prisms. Yeah, I have uh, I was looking into him before, and I was going to grab some of them, but I didn't have the ability to because they were too expensive at the time uh, when I was looking for them. Like, his Prisms were, like, already 12 or $15. And if I'm speculating on a dude like that, I prefer his prism to be around the five to seven dollar mark, and then I'll grab a bunch of them. But once it hits like twelve or fifteen, I have to see more from the player, or I want you know some sort of other confirmation. But yeah, there there was some hype, and I did research him before, and I think Chuma is a probably a pretty solid pick. But as far as the 2021 Rookie of the Year goes, man, I'd hate to spank your banana, but Bol Bol is eligible to be Rookie of the Year. So that's who I'm looking for. <laughs> a little bit of that bull bull. Check the embossed lines around the name of Ricky There you go. That's a nice little trick right there. Here's a Jared Allen out of 299. Got that press proof. Well, a little press proof action. A little bit of wear on the back. Can't monkey with that one either. Here's a nice purple one out of 199. I mean, if you're going to get a Don Russ car, this, you know, you could do worse. Ding on the back, can't do anything with that. And then we have a stack of these different variations of, uh, Jesus Christ, it's all of this shit, isn't it? Look at that. Every variation of optic that you can find, I mean, this is all the base optic, so we'll do that after. But yeah, I, basically, they were so cheap, I went and just bought every type of Jared Allen ever really so there's those and, and you know what I noticed today guys I don't know if you guys have noticed this but you see this right here it's like laser or whatever they call it this specific variation uh, this is the same as beam team if you look at the beam team cards I noticed it today and when I was doing the research yesterday this is the same pattern that beam team has but it's all over the card so they literally ripped the beam team off ah I can't believe they did that you got an absolute memorabilia bull bull. That's cool. I have probably 50 bull bull rookies. Only bought the Dollar Tree basketball because I'm cheap. I wish I could even find them, man. Yeah, blue velocity. Velocity is beam team. That's basically what the beam team pattern is. It's, it's basically the same exact thing if you look at it. Three-year-old baby towels. That, that sounds good, too. That seems reasonable. All right, this looks like it's going to have a scratch on the back of it. Yeah, there's a little bit of edge wear there. Sorry, Jarrett. 
That's all right, man. Your cards are going to be good raw, dude. Then there's that funky disco prism. Real funky. I like that. Uh, Yeah. No, this one looks clean on the back, honestly. And that's the beautiful part about using a magnifying glass, dudes, is that you will find things under the magnifying glass that you can't see with the naked eye. So, like, I can see pretty good in the, in the light angles and all that kind of shit, but once you check it out, you'll see some shit, and you'll be like, oh, I definitely shouldn't send this one in. You know, you'll, you'll get more of an edge, higher grades, less wasted uh, grading fees in general. This one's really close corner's got a, a bit of a I don't know there's just like a little bit of a downturn on it but I, I think that just comes naturally with the card I'll, I'll check the surface on this these two look pretty clean I'm gonna give them further inspection you'll hook you up if you grab the feeder again the feeder what kind of website is this man you have a BVKD and a Kyrie in their Nets jersey nice nice and then this is oh yeah this is the flash 92 Beam Team is incredible. Have you seen 1993 Beam Team, James? That's what I would ask you. 92 is awesome, but 93 is pretty amazing, man. Scratch the fact that I'm Ming the Merciless 93 over on Twitch. Man, this one's close, too. This Flash Prism? All the Flash Prisms I got... I got a bunch of Lonzo Ball flash prisms too, but they didn't uh, they didn't make the cut. Ooh, so this has a big print line across the front of it. I don't think you guys can see it because of the light angles, but yeah, this has got a big print line. He's not gonna make the cut. Hey man, get back in your sleeve, dude. What kind of excellent adventure bullshit is this? Have a good evening. Hey, you as well, Bark. Thanks for stopping in, man. Good to see you, dude. Good old Bark. <laughs> all right let's see uh yes kind of rough on the bottom left on this one i'm not really sure how they're gonna slam these so let's just oh oh yeah there's some funk up at the top and a, and a ding looks like this one's been through a car wash i'm gonna have to set that one aside and that's the other beautiful thing about the cheaper cards that are good to speculate on that have a, a you know pretty good amount of uncapped potential and that is that when the card gets to you and you don't see it in person first, you have a higher chance that you're going to profit when you buy multiple units versus just one because you have more chances to get a gradable card. Do you have Flash Gordon movies as soundtrack on vinyl then? <clears throat> it's right there. I don't. It's li I, You can't see it because there's boxes in front of it, but it's literally behind me. Uh, normally, you guys can see what David Bowie. Yeah, let me, let me get this shit out of here real fast. So if you look back there, you can see David Bowie, and then you can't see what's above or below that. There's, uh, there's Flash Gordon, the yellow one, and then there's a Clockwork Orange soundtrack directly above that. So that's what we're working with soundtrack-wise. Just back over here so you guys can see what Tim Duncan's cooking. Come on, Timothy. Yeah, that's a good one, man. Ah! Maybe I could. Maybe this would be better if I did it like this. If I could take this light so that I could have it. Sorry about that. Uh, and it didn't jam you guys down. This might be better. This is my record grading light right here. This lamp. Remember this lamp? I told you guys in the video. You need a lamp that's been in prison, and that's the one. <clears throat> that's probably better for for everybody involved there. Honestly, I just look like the crypt keeper. Tales from the crypt. No, this is way better. All right, so that isn't going to make it. A little bit of edge wear on the bottom on this Jared Allen. And that's kind of who we're looking at right now. Are you sending this in the bulk $15 a card? Yo, what's up, John? It's going to end up being $12 a card because these are... Well, actually, the 17s are going to... The Jared Allens would be uh, 15 a card, wouldn't they? Yeah, I don't, I don't think that uh, I would send them in at 15 If I can get them for 12 I'll do it. At 15, I'm going to be more selective. But I'll have to go through all that shit once I figure out who's gradable and who isn't. But yeah, these all have a little bit of wear on the bottom. First place to start, really. 
Did you hear the Red Sox announcer call Vertigo Ming the Merciless? No, I don't think I did, man. Are you grading everything 20 day or waiting 300 days or 45 day? Uh, I'm fine just waiting uh, because everything to me is cyclical. So I know that when I put a batch in that I'm not going to see it for like seven months. But if I keep putting batches in every month, eventually I'll get some overlap and then I'm sending a batch out and then they're sending a batch back. Right now I have about eight orders over there. And uh, a lot of them are economy. Two of them are bulk. One is like a you know club special for baseball. Uh, so I have a lot of cards that are over there that are just kind of waiting in the void. So we'll see. Nice Jared. I'll get Jared Allen out of your faces in just a second here, folks. Looks like I'd have to clean this one off. A little bit of surface funk on that. It's difficult to find gradable cards through the mail. I mean, there's also a good chance that whoever was selling these took all the super gem mint fresh stuff out. But with a guy like Jared Allen, I mean, I don't really think many people would care. So I, that's another benefit of getting rookie cards that no one's really paying attention to. And I also have a theory about that for grading that they, they're going to give these types of cards to worse graders. So, like, they're obviously not going to spend 1952 tops Mickey Mantle grade guy on grading a Jared Allen rookie card that's worth nothing, essentially, to them. So I think that, you know, the earlier you get in on a player, the more you send early, uh, then you're going to get a better grade back until that guy is super popular. Once they have a bunch of attention on them uh, and they're really expensive or whatever, not only are they going to throttle the number of 10s they give out, but they're also, you, it's going to just, hold on, i got to put some damn chastic on yeah, you're going to get a better grader and you're probably going to get worse grades because of it. Because they definitely have a, an interest in putting the hammer down. And I mean, I hear that that kind of shit happens some for the vintage stuff, but I really do think that it's just very difficult to grade vintage cards. That's kind of the end of it all. So these disco guys seem like they're pretty decent. Oh, this has got a surface blend. Okay, it wiped off. All right, that's fair. Alright, so I might be sending... Well, no, the centering on this is no good, right? Yeah, the centering on that one is a little bit off. Not going to do it, Jarrett. You're letting me down here, man. We literally have one. And, and, you know, there's probably a case to be made for not even getting this one graded. But that's the only one we have so far. The whole stack. What is this world coming to? What about you, good sir? What say you, Minotaur? All right, all right. Yeah, this one's actually not bad. I like to look at the surface and try to catch the glare. Try to look at the card in the light. Make sure that you can see the print lines, how the surface looks. I see a faint print line on this one right here in the middle of the back. So I'm not gonna send this one in because even though it might slide by, you know, if this hits a nine or an eight, it's basically gonna be trash until he gets you know some pimp activity under his belt <laughs> yeah seems like it i don't think they're that bad necessarily but they're uh you know less than stellar you could say but nonetheless we have uh we have one it'll probably come back a nine but i'm sending this one so far we've got one select and then i got this stack to look through real quick right here of all these jared allen's any interest in some mid-50s football, Ming? Uh, two to four great... Uh, well, I don't know, dude. 50s football, like who? The problem with 50s football is that I don't know a lot of the guys, and I'm not going to have much of a nostalgic connection to them. So if you're talking about just flipping you know, money to money, then yeah, sure, I'm interested. But if you mean, like, does it you know, grind your whatever, does it make you feel good inside? Not really. Not as good as this fine Aquafina with a bunch of crystal light sprayed into it. It tastes just like a freezer pop. And it's only going to give me cancer as I get older. Alright. That looks like a dog chewed on the corner of it. That one looks like it's been hanging out in Carson's car. So we're going to pass on that. Ding on the corner. Ding dong, the witch is dead. How many of y'all are going trick-or-treating on Halloween? The centering on this one is off? Yeah, this one's not centered. You're thinking about throwing together a mystery pack for me? 
Hell yeah, man. I don't have a P.O. box or anything, but if anybody wants to send something my way, a mystery mail or anything like that, as long as it doesn't have, like, flaming dog shit in it, which they would probably catch before it got here, but, you know, I'm down with it, man. Send me a man which Send me a can of tuna fish. I don't care. I'll open it on stream. I'll give you a shout-out. I know we've had a couple of people buy stuff from the eBay store uh, as well, so if you guys ever buy anything from our eBay store and you mention, hey, uh, you know, this is me from the from your YouTube channel, then I'll give you a shout out in a video or something like that. I appreciate the support and everything. In these trying times, you know, it's uh, it's nice when people are, are spending their resources when they don't have to in a way like that. You've been buying a lot of 90s base oh basketball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like what, though? What, what do you like, Caesar? If you were on the Jam City along with me... Oh, that one's got a real big ding on the corner. Jeez, man. It's like it's in a bad neighborhood or something. Man, I can't do this one either. Uh, 90s basketball? You mean just like inserts or, you know, Jam City type stuff? PSA 10? Raw wax packs? No, can't do it. I mean, I don't think we're going to get any Jared Allens here. Oh, well, that, one's, that one's nice. That is a very crisp Jared Allen. Let me see if the if the surface says so as well. Surface says. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You bought your first Kobe rookie? Which one? Kobe, Kobe, and more Kobe? Yeah, I really like the Kobe Hoops rookie because everybody knows hoops and it and it's not that bad. I mean, I, I know a lot of people don't like the full frame cards or whatever, but it's got gold foil on it. It's definitely hard to grade. There's like a little bit of a, nah, well, no, I think that would be okay. Yeah, this one's pretty crisp, guys. I, I think we have one that we might send in. Let me see the centering on the front. It's a little bit off left to right. But I do like this whole glitter thing they're doing. Yeah, the, the centering is a little off on this one, unfortunately. But is it off enough? I mean, I, I think it's probably fine. I'm going to have to double check that one. Seems all right. We might have one. Raw mint condition Kobe's from the 90s are the next huge thing. Yeah, I think uh, I think that Jam City Kobe is really good looking. And I honestly think those Swirloramas... I mean, if you guys didn't check out that video I posted today, there's some really cool insert sets on there. I think that the uh, they have a lot of potential. I mean, the damn kickstart is crazy looking. And then... I really like Jam City because of the unique look to it with the black and white, the city, the graffiti, you know, it's just, it's very nice. Man, this is, this is close. Let's see what the surface is trying to say to us right here. Let's take a whisper. It's like putting a conch shell up against your ear. What are you trying to tell me here, Jarrett? No. Surface is okay. A little bit of a edge yeah no that seems reasonable okay and the front yeah same sort of deal with the centering but that might be okay and it's got like one of these little weird dots that these often have but no this this one looks like it it might be okay i don't see much wrong with this surface give you guys a little taste right there oh. <laughs> Kobe on-card autos. Yeah, I mean, those would be crazy. You got the Jimmy Swirlo and Terrence Ross. Yeah, I've got some... Um, I've got the Damian Lillard rookie. Uh, I And I bought some today or yesterday or whatever. I, I bought a, a bunch of Kevin Durant. So I found a guy... Well, one was $10 on C, And then I found a guy who had them for like $2.80. And he had eight of them. So I bought every single one of them. And then he had a shack for like 2 bucks, And I only got a couple of those. But yeah, I was trying to pick up those Swirloramas. Those would be cool to get graded as well for sure. I like them. All right. You're out of here, Jarrett. Sorry, can't hook you up. You're out of here, sir. Bam. Can't do much with that. Yeah, well, I don't know. I don't know about this guy. Well, well, <laughs> I feel like I'm trying to decide what TV station I'm going to watch. I'm flipping through channels. Here comes Yo! MTV Raps. I'm like, well, well, and, and it, well, no, I'm out of here. I'm going to go see what QVC's got going on. I need to buy some gold rings and 
centering is horrible on this. I appreciate your basketball videos. Keep making videos, bro. Yo, Dennis, I appreciate that, man. Thank you. And I will. I will, man. I'll, I'll keep sharing with you all of the nonsense that keeps spilling out of my head. Because it, it gets crazy in there, guys. If you guys think I'm crazy, just imagine being inside my brain. It's just like a bowl of cereal that just constantly spills over. There goes the sugar. There go the cornflakes. How the hell did this marshmallow get in here? This one ain't so bad. This one's not so bad. Corners, right, right. Surface looks good. Corners look sharp. Everything seems reasonable. Centering on the front seems decent. I think we have uh, perhaps another candidate for sending this guy in. We got like three of these base ones. That's not bad. We must have gotten them from the same dude or something. All right, that one's not going to cut the mustard. No, a little too much on that. All right, that one's clean as... Oh, no, the corner. All right. Now, how many of you guys have actually gotten into hockey cards at all? I'll tell you what. I bought a bunch of these Connor McDavid Platinum cards, and I got them all around the $20 range, and they're already up to about 50 bucks. And that's just in the NBA bubble time frame. And he wasn't even, you know, he didn't even go that far into the playoffs. The Oilers got eliminated. Yeah, not many of these Jared Allens look good enough to grade. And again, I'm not going to go through the hard wire insanity. I'm just going to kind of pick the stuff out uh, with you folks and then just do the rest of it after. So those are the guys that are going to make it to the next round, playing that round robin game. And this stack of Jared Allen, we'll have to go over here and wait to be dispersed in other ways. But yeah, this stuff is great, honestly. OPG Platinum is so underpriced. So is Allure. If you guys haven't got any of this stuff, if you're not into hockey, I would suggest that you at least check it out. I mean, if you know, even if you're just not a fan of hockey, but you're trying to make money, then this is a good way to do it. I mean, look at how attractive these retro rookies are. Look at that. That's a silver rainbow Braden Point. You know, this thing probably only goes for like 10 or 12 bucks now, but I probably only paid like $3 for it. And they're just going up. I mean, that dude was a beast. And he's going to be a big part of that team's future. Very attractive card. So this one, the back is off center, but it looks super sharp. And I think it'll make the cut if this if the front surface is good. I might be able to clean some of this off. It's got like a, a slight bit of funk on it, but not much. With that, you just kind of breathe on it and let it go. I'm really just looking for print lines and, and things of that nature. I'll share that with you guys. Nice little... Yeah, it's pretty good. Got my Fleer Glossy and Upper Deck KD rookie card in the mail. Nice. Sell the Glossy or grade it probably 8.85. Uh, it would depend on how much it would it is worth and then what the time frame would look like to get it back if it was worth grading. And then I would just make a decision from there. I think the best time to sell Kevin Durant is probably going to be at the beginning of the season and then whenever they start getting closer to the playoffs. So at least the way that it plays out in my head when I model it is that the season starts, everybody's hyped up for basketball, so the card prices go up. Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving get a shit ton of attention, so the Brooklyn Nets cards specifically start going up if they win games then they're you know the hype is going to continue if they lose their first couple of games people are going to shit all over them their cards are going to tank out or or at least flatline and then hype will die down towards the middle of the season when people expect them uh, to make the playoffs unless they pull off some crazy win versus lebron or somebody else and then as we get closer to the playoffs the cards will start creeping up in value as people perceive whether or not they can win a championship and how things are looking there. So that's how I think that'll whole, all play out. So I'm in. And uh, yeah, this is probably going to make the cut. The centering is good. Crisp, clean. Uh, surface is nice. We've got a Braden Point, ladies and gentlemen. Very attractive rookie card. Another one right here. And again, the back centering is a little bit off, but that's okay. Corners are super sharp. No print lines on the back, which is always nice. I mean, you guys don't even have to watch basketball next season because I pretty much told you how it's going to play out right there. Bam. 
you could just pay me the 70 bucks you would have paid NBA TV or whatever so that they can black out every single game that you ever tried to watch. I mean, what are you talking about? Blacking out games in the bubble? I paid 60 bucks for the NBA TV or whatever, and man, it made me upset. I was pissed, dude. Because I was trying to watch every single game, and I had to go back to, like, you know, wherever I could find it. Because I couldn't play it on, on... They're all blacked out, every single game. What, what, what kind of nonsense is this? I think this one's going to make the cut, too, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to have to do a, a surface clean on it, but it just has a couple of marks. So this is a nice one as well. Crisp, clean, Braden Point. Very nice. Champion. He's like their best scorer. That's why his last name is so funny, because all that dude does is score points. So, Braden, you're going to make the cut. And then here are the platinum regular rookies, the base rookies, not the retro variation. Class action refund. Yeah, exactly. Who thinks KD is a good buy? I think he's a good buy, but I'll tell you what. If you buy him now and you buy at the top, you might be kissing your money goodbye. So you need to hunt for good deals. That's what's up. Or you need to find one that you can run through grading and get a nice uptick in value. But yeah, these are, are pretty crisp for the most part. Like, the back of this is solid. As long as it doesn't have print lines, we're probably in a pretty good position. There's a little mark that I can clean off the back. A little bit of edging down here on this one. And there's a ding on the top. All right, so this one probably isn't going to cut the mustard. But nonetheless, I mean, look how attractive that is. Tell me that's not an attractive card. Nice rainbow with the red and the yellow on the side, like a McDonald's advertisement. You know what I mean? OPG Platinum, guys. If you're into hockey at all, then you, you probably know about this stuff. But, yeah, th this stuff is good. It's attractive. I'm in. Let me see what we got here. We have the... This one's way too off-center, so this guy's not going to make the cut. Uh, our Tiger Woods rookie card or anything. What's up, Paul? I would say they probably are. I don't have much knowledge about uh, golf cards in general, so I wouldn't be the guy to ask about that. But I would assume that... You know, Tiger Woods rookie cards have some value. These are all way too off-center, but that's okay. They're still nice cards. They're still going to get value, and I still only paid a couple bucks a piece for them. Uh, so I don't I don't really mind having them. So, yeah, these Braden points. And I like how they call it rainbow. This is essentially silver. Like, if you like prism silver or, you know, select prism, then this is basically the same thing. But OPG Platinum, they call it rainbow. Rainbow. Kevin Durant is a great investment, but you're right. You have to be wise how you buy. Yeah, that's true. What is a basketball card nobody knows about that will shoot up? Topps Chrome. Magical Johnson, Topps Chrome. All right, so these guys are going to get set aside. These Braden points don't make the cut. Oh, sorry about that. Who's next? So these are Allure cards, and this is essentially Upper Deck came out with their own prism or select because hockey basically didn't have one you know platinum to me is basically tops chrome but allure looks just like select i mean look at that right there and you can see the grooves in the card but it's totally smooth it's just like select and this is the first year that it came out <clears throat> they got a bunch of different parallels you know you got your die cuts you know you got your colored parallels they call this one pink ass salmon I think the reality is called Sunset, but that's pink-ass salmon to me. And, you know, it, it kind of ruins a beautiful card, because I don't know, maybe it's a Canadian thing. If anybody's Canadian out there, can you guys, like, tell me why we would want salmon-colored parallels? I mean, I'm getting them anyway, and the name is cool, Sunset, whatever, but I wish the sun would set on this color. And maybe it's just me. Maybe it just reminds me of, of day-old cat vomit. I don't know. What's up, Paul? Thank you very much. I appreciate it, man. No problem. Glad to help. What up, Brian B? And it goes for about $350 in a PSA 10. Yeah, see, it sounds reasonable, but it also sounds like it has room. So, yeah, we're going to check these out. Here's Quinn Hughes. You have a case of 89 tops traded with the Griffey. You got about 70 cards that I want graded. You think I should all 70 in the same order? Uh, yeah, I would just send them all in the same order, dude. Definitely. Just send them in and, and get them done for sure. I mean, the faster they go, the faster they come back. So, yeah, we've got basically our, our prism first year here. And this is a very crisp die cut, but I'm not sure how they're going to grade. I've never graded a die cut before, so if I see anything around the edges, I'm probably not in. 
on grading it. And this one appears to have a little bit of lift and then a print line on this one. The white rainbow, you know, still a good looking card. And, on, on, you know, Quinn Hughes is pretty good. I have a bunch of blasters. I actually have a, a case of uh, 2019 or whatever the, you know, this dude's rookie year. A case of that in there. Upper Deck Series 1. I'll probably bust it at some point. But then again, I might as well sell it whole. I don't know. Maybe I'll just bust it on stream one day. I don't know. I can clean this off. Some dude put his Minotaur beef paw all over the back of the card before he sent it. So that's not cool. Either way, that should clean off. Let's see what the edging looks like on this. Ooh, there's like a groove on it, man. There's a little bit of the Bootsy Collins up on the side of that. You guys can't see it, but man... Oh, that's nice. That's awesome, Dean. I have a, uh, I got a PSA order with Kobe 1996 tops in it, but I don't think it's going to grade higher than like a, a eight if I'm lucky, probably a seven. It's got a surface issue, I believe. I just wanted it graded. I only paid 80 bucks for it, so I'm making money even if it comes back raw. And then there's the base Quinn Hughes. We'll see what this one looks like. This one looks super crisp. Yeah, I think die cuts are, are very, really difficult to grade for the most part. Uh, it, well, is, this, is that going to clean off? Maybe. PSA 6 just sold for 120 yeah, yeah, exactly. I figured it would be a 7. It would be worth a couple hundred bucks. I mean, if I had a PSA 6 and the raw was going for 200 I would just crack it out of the case. You know what I mean? I would just crack that shit right out of the case. That would be the case. All right. I think... This one is maybe, I mean, there's like a, there's a tiny print line on this one, but it's all the way at the top. Weird, but it's probably enough that they'll only give it a nine. I don't know how harshly they're going to grade these, but it's, it's cool. The only thing I don't necessarily like is this Oreo cookie they put up there. Oreo rookie. That's what they're going to call these, the Oreo rookies. It just looks like an Oreo cookie rookie. You know what I mean? But other than that, I mean, it's a really attractive card. Very nice design. And it's the first year. First year select. First year allure. But yeah, we're going to pass on that one just because of that top ding. I don't think that's going to be a thing. I mean, these are really crisp for the most part. So it's really going to come down to the surface issues. If we find any of them. And I'll, I'll try to hurry up through the hockey so you guys can get to the better stuff that you'd rather see. But I really do think that you should give this stuff a shot. While it's dirt cheap, you can still get a lot of these rookies for like six bucks or less. This one looks really crisp and clean. Looks like I'll be able to clean off any issue on the surface. Uh, so I'm probably going to end up submitting. Oh, maybe. Nope, it's got the same print line over the top. Damn. The drink here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Scraped up. I mean, they'll use anything. So it's really crazy. They'll just have, like, you know, top loaders that they got in a collection from 1962. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I It definitely, it doesn't cost much to have a fresh top loader, use a bit of freezer tape, and put it in a team bag or, or whatever, or use the freezer tape. I mean, there's a lot of ways that you can just make it clean and fresh for your your customer for the guy who's buying it from you and that's what i like to do yeah this looks like it has a very faint mark on the top which will keep me from sending it in i don't think you guys can see it in the light it's very faint but it's like right in that area either way do you pc any cards that you won't ever sell uh you know everything's kind of on the table man i live by the way of the stoic philosopher uh, to me a ferrari and a pinto are both just you know metal and wheels obviously uh, you would rather have the ferrari if you could but at the end of the day getting to point a and point b is is really the goal and if you stop caring so much about what other people think and how other people perceive you and if you can just kind of let go of all of that nonsense then you're going to be a happier person because you don't have to live up to expectations of people that you don't even like or care about or you know people that don't have a day-to-day -day effect on your life so for me 
Uh, when it comes to PC, yeah, I like Damian Lillard, I like Bo Jackson, I like Don Mattingly, but unless there's something sentimental, like my dead grandmother gave it to me, or, you know, some reason to keep it that means more than just what it is, it's probably on the table to be sold at some point, even if I keep it as long as I possibly can until my little Grinch heart needs to accrue value. This one's got a little surface ding, so this salmon-ass pink ain't gonna make the cut. Imagine if that was blood-ass red. It would be so much better than salmon-ass pink. Then we have some Quinn Hughes uh, higher level whatever they are. Uh, these They did the same thing with select. You know how they, you know, the base card is, see again, this is why they copied select. This is number 66, the base card, and he's in his home jersey. And then this one is number 101, right? And he's in the away jersey, and it's, you know, slightly different variation, whatever. But it's still an Oreo cookie rookie. Where's that mega stuff at? I'll tell you what, the best Oreo cookie comes in a blizzard, and it's called a mint Oreo blizzard. Print line on that one. Not going to make the cut. What else we got? This one's very clean and crisp on the front, so that'll probably make the cut. I feel like I'm Bob Ross. I'm, like, looking for happy accidents, you know? Uh, and this one's got a nice edge to it. But, uh, yeah, this one's very close. I might... I'm going to have to look at, under the microscope for this one, I think. That corner is a little bit dicey. And then that top has a bit of notching to it, a little bit of an edge on that. I'll probably just pass on it. <laughs> Final 15 minutes on my David Wright. Yo, good luck, man. What's up, Brian B? I'm late to this party. Do you send in cards that you think will grade 8 if you can still make 10 bucks at an 8, or are you looking for 9s or 10s? It depends. I mean, making a, a double up on your card is decent, but I'm looking for higher multipliers simply because of the time that I have to have invested uh, in it because you also have to pay for insurance both ways uh, you have to pay for shipping there there are hidden costs that they don't really tell you so yes you have to you know pay them twelve dollars or whatever or fifteen dollars whatever it is but there's more than that as you have to pay for shipping both ways you have to pay for the supplies to send the stuff and all that other nonsense so, I mean you have a lot of hidden fees and then you can average all of that out uh, between your cards I mean and, and these are two thousand and 19 or whatever, you know, so I'm actually gonna have to pay 15 bucks to have these cards graded Which to me makes no sense because if it's a hockey card They should just grade the damn thing for free because I know ain't nobody sending them hockey cards other than 2015 Connor McDavid rookie. That's it. That's the only card anyone's sending in so if you're out there PSA Here's a PSA for you you ought to just let us send hockey cards in for free. Because we know, as well as you know, that ain't nobody submitting them. So this isn't like one of those baseball things where everybody's sending in 50000 of the same, you know, Tatis Jr. or whatever. Here's my white rainbow die-cut Jack Hughes. Oh, God, there's too many of them out there. Can't, uh, you know, can't grade that efficiently. This one's pretty crisp looking. Not bad. Real clean. Real smooth. We might be sending this one in, folks. No fingerprints, no weird shit, no funny stuff, no funny business. We take what you have on you and we call it even. All right, I'm in on this one. This one's clean and crisp and it looks minty fresh. So I'm probably going to send this Jack Hughes in. I like the finest long term, shorter ROI, UD, glossy. Yeah, exactly. At the end of the year, do you have to pay tax on sales? Of course. Look, in America. You have to pay tax on breathing, all right? If you breathe, they're going to charge you for the air that you've used. Boy, oh boy. So let me see if the other Jack Hughes is just as fresh. It's like Druidia, man, you know? Canned air. Planet Druidia. How many people are down with space balls? Oh, that's got a... Oh, no, that wasn't a, a surface scratch. That's good. It was just like a piece of card. It was a piece of fresh card. Yeah, this one's crisp and clean as well. Nice, attractive white rainbow. Let me see what it looks like over here. Yeah, these are very clean, uh, very crisp. I'm not sure if they're going to jam me down on this right side. In fact, let me check that on this one because that might prevent me from sending it in. There's like a little lift up on the side, and it's on 
every one of these that I've seen. Okay, it's not on this one, but it looks like it's pretty common for these. So I probably will not send this one in because of it. Now, let's see the pink ass salmon Jack Hughes. What do we got? Well, there's a little bit of funk right there, little Bootsy Collins on them. The edging or the notching at the top of this card. I wonder if it's like Fleer. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's difficult to show you. But very, very at the top of the card, there's a decent amount of notching. And there's some print lines too. So this one is out of here, man. Let's see. But the pink ass salmon. But it's the short print, like the premier level. So we have our premier level pink ass salmon. Let me see if we got those print lines. This one is actually clean of print lines. Okay, that's good. Doesn't really have a bunch of notching up at the top. Maybe just like a, a very tiny amount, but it can't be perfect. And the front, if the front is clean, then we have a pal and a confidant. I don't know if that's just the card or if that's just like a little mark. I'm probably gonna send this one in. This one looks extremely clean, crisp. Uh, no real funk, no print lines, so we've got it right there. Jack Hughes, Pink Ass Salmon, Oreo Cookie Rookie, we're shipping them. So what do we got so far to send in? Four hockey cards and, and four Jared Allens. All right, I'll go a little faster, guys, so that we don't take too, too much longer. Just kind of get the preliminary stuff done here yeah, with you guys. Just... Hey, what the hell, woman? I'm just kidding. <laughs> She can't get enough of me, apparently. Good God. Uh, any print lines over here? No, a little bit of edging at the top. Not gonna do it. Sorry. Sorry what? You can make all the noise you want. You can come join me and say hello if you'd like. Hello. Oh, well, that's half right anyway. Hello everyone. All right, there's a print line on that, so that one's not going to make the cut. We have 28 people watching. I know, I was watching. But nice. I'm doing, makeup, I'm doing laundry and I don't have any makeup on, so I'm just uh -oh. going to mind my own business. When has that ever stopped you before? Well, I just seen it. <laughs> I know, I'm just kidding. All right, Jack Hughes, not going to make the cut. Uh, but we're not done with Jack Hughes. Apparently, we have more Jack Hughes rookies. You're doing your submission with me right now, so far. Oh, uh, yeah. All right. There's another Jack Hughes. Crisp, clean on the front. No print lines. And on the back, yeah, the Allure cards seem to have a print line up at the very top here quite frequently. So the thing that that will do is that if it's only a percentage of the cards, then it'll still count against you. But if literally like 99% of them have that print line, then they will have to accept that and take that into consideration. I'm not sure how that is for, for this set. So I might just, uh, I might send one in just to see. But again, they probably don't have that many submissions of this stuff. So they're probably more likely to grade it like a, like a prism card or something. So I'll probably get jacked. That one has a print line as well. Yeah, print line up at the top. Still pretty nice cards, and if Jack Hughes ends up being a pimp, I mean, these are nice cards to have, you know? And you can still pick these up pretty cheap. I mean, they're, they're cheap, man. Got that first year allure. And then, Big Money Hustlin', the big pimp. These have already started to go up. I think the base is six bucks, but like these red ones, I got these red rainbows, and, and these are back up, I don't know, they're like, 20 25 dollars or something like that i know they they went up to like 30 for a day or two uh pretty attractive cards overall 2019 select field level russell wilson nice i have a 2016 optic hollow russell wilson uh numbered to it's like numbered to 399 or something like that i also have a poo holes second year i think it's second year maybe it's third year either way i have a old ass uh russell wilson refractor or not Russell Wilson, but Pujols Refractor at PSA. 93 Fleer Jordan. Yeah, I, I have about 20 2007 Upper, or not Upper Deck, but I have four of the Upper Deck Car cards, I believe, and then a couple others, but I have 20 of the 2007 Tops 
at PSA right now. That would be very nice to get back. All right, I'll hurry up with the hockey stuff so you guys uh, can see the more interesting things. In fact, after Connor McDavid, I'll just put the hockey aside and, and do that myself after. Because I don't want to be on here all night either, take up everybody's time and whatnot. So yeah, Connor McDavid, that's the guy. And the edging up at the top is horrible. I don't know, you guys can't see that, but wow. Wow, is that nonsense. Nonetheless, this is that uh, salmon, pink-ass salmon. We're just going to check the tops of these. You know, that'll, that'll tell you the tail right there. Same thing right there. Just looks like the, you know, sort of the edging on a diaper. It's kind of weird. Yeah, same edging right here, which I don't like. And then this one has another print line. Like I got anything better to do. <laughs> Come on, man. Well, I got better things to do. Jeez. I can only dedicate so much time. 2018 select courtside Jimmy Butler. That sounds like a nice one. But copper, I don't like the bronze or the copper or the salmon. I like clear, crisp, bold color. Yeah, that top edge on these all looks the same. So they're probably not going to make the cut for grading. I hope it's not the same with the base card, which it, it might be. I have five of these Connor McDavid base cards. And I shit you not, guys. I shit you not. Uh, I got these all on Compsy, and I bought like 120 bucks worth of this Allure stuff, and I was getting these for like a dollar 38. I mean, they're they're like seven dollars now, seven or eight bucks. But nonetheless, I was picking them up for like a buck 38. That's really cheap when you think about the longevity that Connor McDavid is going to have, and then you think about this set when it starts to get more popular. And you know, I'm not expecting hockey to get more of a following, but if hockey ever gets popular as well, suddenly you're looking at first year prism style activity in another eight or 10 years. So, I mean, I'm just gonna hang on to these pretty much forever. This is not, it's not really PC, but there's no reason to ever get rid of them until they really pop off. Found an old stash of tons of 1972 Topps basketball. That's awesome. I, of course, pulled all the greats out, but I was wondering what you would do with the commons. They're all in pretty great condition. Um, well, Big Cat Man, here's what I would say. If they're all in great condition, then, you know, even though they're commons graded, they would be awesome. So, I mean, if you've got your Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, of which I have three of at PSA, and you got your Julius Irvings and all that type of shit pulled out... You know, check and see what commons you have and how much they go for graded because people still do try to collect sets and it's very difficult to get that vintage basketball stuff. And because it's basketball, it wasn't as popular as the other sports, so there's not as much of it graded. So if, you know, the people are turning towards vintage basketball, then you would do well to consider at least grading rather than just selling them at two or three bucks. And if they were all only worth like two or three dollars and you didn't really see any that were worth grading, I would simply put them all up in one lot. In fact, I have lots on my eBay store right now. I think of 1972. Uh, who else do we have? Ooh, did we get a sale? You guys can always go check out my eBay store if you ever get bored. There's a link down in the channel stuff. I'm not saying you gotta buy anything. Actually, I'm saying you gotta buy some. No, but, but you know, you can go check it out. See what we got floating around in there. It's usually kind of fun. But, um... Yeah, I've got a few lots of vintage basketball up there that's not in condition that's uh, conducive to grading. Hey, what's up, Rob? How you doing, man? Made your night? Hell yeah, man. Well, high five, mother... Mmm, making my night too, dude. <laughs> yeah, Red Wave I can get behind. How much do you think Topps uh, PSA will shoot up? I don't know. You see it going to 5K? Because Curry was 5K. Kawhi Prism Base 5K? Yeah, he, he is for sure. It, it all depends on how... The beginning of the season and everything sort of shakes out a lot of people are saying that the negative for durant is that you know he is injured with that achilles whatever and that injury is going to prevent him from being as good as he was well even if that's the case long term his resume is good enough that even though there's some speculation you know that he just kind of jumped on the bandwagon on the warriors or whatever his resume is good enough that his cards will go up anyway. So it, it's really going to be affected by how he performs during the season while he's still active. Because we all know the same thing with LeBron. You know, if, if he comes out and does horrible, his cards will go down for a bit. But you know long term, 
he's LeBron. His resume is amazing. The day that he retires, the day that he hits the Hall of Fame, his cards are just going to go back up. So, I mean, it's, it's a safe bet. It's a long bet, but it's a safe bet. And the reason why I'm passing on all these guys is because there's edging up at the top of the card that it's very difficult to kind of illustrate to you guys, but it's just, it's crimped in a way. <laughs> glad, man. I'm glad. Anytime I can share a little bit of stupidity and have some people entertained by it, that makes me happy. And, and with the videos, I'm going to try to put out as many as I can. We just got monetized. We just put out a Patreon. Uh, you know, I'm having a lot of fun doing this stuff, and I, and I look forward to continuing and getting better at making videos. So before, I wasn't using any editing at all. My editing is that I don't ever shut up. I just keep going. But now that I'm editing it, I'm just finding myself, I want to put this in here. I want to edit that. I want to add a picture. I want to add a flavor. You know what I mean? It's like you go out for, you know, frozen yogurt, and you just can't come out without having 17 pieces of cheesecake, Captain Crunch, pineapple, all of that. I don't know if you guys have ever had Captain Crunch and pineapple, but it's really good with white chocolate. And if you weren't sure, Denny's has a real nice apple dessert. Man, this has just got a weird edge to it. This white rainbow. So I don't think I can do that. Damn it, Connor McDavid. I was hoping that I'd have more gradable hockey cards, honestly. I love the last few minutes of bids. Yeah, dude. If you have a card that everybody wants, it pops off. It does. It usually jams pretty, pretty hard. Yeah, see, there's this, like, edging here that I just can't justify. It's literally right here. The card kind of lifts up a little bit. But the whole... But that's just kind of the way the card is made. Maybe I'll just toss one in to see, because otherwise it's crisp. Have you ever considered investing in PSA itself? Yes, I have. I haven't yet, but I thought, you know, for a while, hey, I need to invest in PSA, actually invest in them uh, as a company. Yeah. It's like collector, whatever. Yeah, yeah, CLCT. You got it. Brian B is a shareholder. Yeah, I think it's it's smart. I think it's a smart investment. I think NBA Top Shot is something that you guys need to get into as well. In fact, let me see if I can't drop a link up on that. Yo, we got a message on eBay. What's up? Who's talking to me? Would you do seventy five? What? Let me see what the price is. Well, the price is eighty nine ninety nine. And my dude is trying to, to hit me for 75 on my Gary Trent Jr. lot. Let me see. 40, 50, No, I will do 80. That's, that's about the best I can do. I'll do 80. That's fine with me. Let, me. let me get my hairy arm in here for a second so I can type. I can do... 80 for you. I still have to cover fees and shipping. Appreciate the offer, friend. Hope this works. There you go. Nice, kind, give them a deal. Always work with people if you can, but be firm. Don't let people run over you and you'll do well in this business. As my friend once told me, whose family's flipped antiques forever, when I was getting good, or better at this stuff, he said, always leave a little meat on the bone for the next guy. What's your eBay store? Uh, there is a link down below, I believe, in the information for this stream. Yeah, if you, well, no, there isn't. That's weird. Hold on, guys, let me, let me get you some links real quick. I mean, I'm not Zelda, but I'll get you the link. All right, I'm going to drop. First of all, if you guys wanted to support via Patreon, you could become Magic Johnson, Magical Johnson. Uh, you know, there's a bunch of... It's funny. It's funny. You could be... The first guy is actually Johnson. So you could just be Johnson or you could be Magic Johnson. And then you have the 86 Fleer Michael Jordan and you could be him. So that's the first thing. And then the eBay store is right here along with Twitter and Instagram just in case you guys want to get in on any of this. And then finally, I'm going to hit you guys with that NBA Top Shot because I really believe in this stuff. And it's cheap enough that even if you guys hate it with a vehement passion, you could probably buy 50 bucks worth and still make money long term. So that's what I got for you for links. 
Hopefully that's not too spammy or anything like that. I'm not like begging you guys or nothing out here. Obviously we's doing all square. Just trying to share, share with the people. That was one of the reasons why I stopped streaming on Twitch TV. But I think that was just a period of time on Twitch really where it kind of started drying up a bit. But it just felt like I was just trying to hammer out this and that on there. What does this white rainbow say? I don't want... I don't know, guys. It's got the same sort of dentation on the on the card. It's a nice looking card, but I'm gonna try and send a couple of these in, man. Earnings should be great. People take profits after ER. 2012 hoops. Anthony Davis. You bought the cheapest buy it now and got here looking minty fresh. Yo, Carson, dude. I got a lot of 2012 hoops, my man. Uh, I was in a when I was going all in on Damian Lillard. I bought and I realized that the you know 2012 hoops had Kawhi, Anthony Davis, it had Lillard, Jimmy Butler to a lesser extent. There's a ton of rookies in that class. So I bought a bunch of boxes of 2012 hoops. I bought them for 175 bucks a piece. I didn't keep any of them. I opened them all like adult. They're like $800 now, but I have 5 Anthony Davis, 5 Kawhi Leonard's, a few uh, I've got like five clay i've got like three kyrie irving uh two damian lillards i just everything under the sun all at psa for grading but they're all like minty fresh straight out of the pack and a lot of them should hit a 10 so i have a it's a very juicy batch of psa cards that one you're looking at this taco bell kyrie yeah that's a cool one right it's interesting i have a i have a bunch of those floating around not the kyrie specifically i also have a durant and a few other guys that are inconsequential. Those guys are irrelevant. But yeah, those are pretty difficult to get, those those Taco Bells. This has got some weird shit at the top of it, this red rainbow. Otherwise, it's a very beautiful surface on the front. I don't have to probably pass on, on sending that in because it's probably going to hit a 9. But that's unfortunate because that is the most expensive one. Right now, it sells for like 25 bucks, And it's just really attractive. Very nice die cut. And, you know, traditionally, I haven't been into die-cut cards. I was never a big fan of the die-cut. Exactly, especially since it's a double class. I mean, it's it's so, so stout. So I really should have kept more of that product. I, I found a guy on eBay and messaged him and worked with him, and he came down from, like, his $200 price and was selling me boxes for 175 and I bought, like, two, and then I bought two more, and then I opened all of them. All the autographs sucked, but all the minty fresh rares are all at PSA. So I have a very juicy order. I got lucky on Damian Lillard as well. I have four Prism uh, Damian Lillard rookies in that order, along with, uh, I mean, I have so many good basketball rookies because I just started buying them up before people got to them. I got lucky in that sense. I bought James Harden rookies. I got nine or 10 of them around the 50 to $60 mark. Uh, I got about 20 2007 Durants, and I was in on, you know around the $20 mark on most of those. I mean, it's just very juicy. If you had to spend 2 k what basketball card would you get to make money upcoming season? Now, uh, Dean, do you mean one card to buy? Because I wouldn't spend 2 k on one card. I wouldn't just go buy like a Luka and hold it. I would spread that investment out across multiple dudes that had a lot of opportunity i'd be looking for guys with a safe floor that weren't going to really go down so if i had to bounce off of that guy i wouldn't lose much i'd be picking up guys like lonzo ball brandon ingram uh you know jason tatum i think is in a beautiful spot you can get his optic cards for about forty dollars uh, there's just a lot of safe guys that are in kind of a tweener position. Like Jason Tatum is in a position to where he could become the next LeBron Giannis guy, or he could just be very good, you know, or he could, you know, he could go beyond that, or he could just stay where he's at. So his cards are very safe. You could buy all the optics you want at the 30 to $40 range, and you probably wouldn't lose very much. It's not very likely to become a $20 card. So I would be looking for safe bets like that, and I would get, you know, I wouldn't overinvest. I think that's another problem uh, that people have is that they overinvest. They'll pick a guy and you know they'll buy, all right, I'm going to get 30 of these Jason Tatum rookies when you would be fine just buying 10 or 12 of them. Maybe Jason Tatum, you could go to, to 20 because he's who he is and he's more stable. Uh, but you also have to think about how you're going to be able to sell that card as well. And 
the window on some of these rookies, especially during the bubble where everything was kind of going up and down, the window for certain players didn't last for very long. There's some marking on the top of this right here, so I'm, I'm going to pass on grading this one. But yeah, there was the window uh, for guys like Michael Porter Jr. He jumped up his PSA 9. I bought four of them for 50 bucks, and they jumped up to 165. I didn't sell at that point in time. They started going down. I got out at 120 and 100, so I still made money, and I still have two left. But I could have caught the top. So that's the type of deal I'm talking about. It depends on the guy, but the window doesn't necessarily have to be open for too long. So I would pick multiple guys. I would pick guys like Jason Tatum, Lonzo Ball. I'd be looking at the free agency class. I've been picking up, you know, just random guys for free agency. Like I've got a bunch of Fred Van Vliet anyway, but he's a guy that people are looking at. You know, I said Carmelo Anthony in my video the other day, and then the very next day it came out that he's looking for full-time minutes somewhere. And if not, then he'll go back to being a role player on the, on the Blazers. And there's even a talk about him going and playing for the Knicks again, and he's been working out in New York. I'd be picking up rookies that have a lot of potential, like R.J. Barrett. Uh, just, you know, there's a lot of different guys like that. Got a ton of the 13 select of that class. Right, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm with you for there, for sure. 18 or 19, courtside Tatum. Exactly. I have, the, uh, I have a, a green prism second-year Tatum. At PSA right now yeah and it all depends on what happens I mean they're probably gonna get Gordon Hayward out of there I think Gordon Hayward is probably overpaid injury prone you know he's okay but they already have Jalen Brown and and, and Jason Tate I mean they're they just they don't really need Gordon Hayward he's outlived his usefulness damn there's a scratch on the front of this so this Kale McCarr is not gonna make the cut but Kale McCarr was another good rookie. And other than Connor McDavid, he's probably the most expensive guy here uh, as far as the hockey allure stuff goes. So we're going to just check these real quick and get out of here. Kale McCarr. Oops. Surface issue. But yeah, I mean, you don't even have to spend 2K. That's the beautiful part about it. Like, there's a bunch of different guys that you can get, but most of them are just going to be decent rookies. You know, you can pick up some, you know, Zion Williamson while he's low, but I wouldn't go too crazy with him just in case he ends up a fat cinnamon uh, roll type guy. A uh, little bit of a marking on the back here. Whoa. Kale McCarr is a beast. Something you noticed today, luck of the lottery. Prison 2017. Yeah, the luck of the lottery cards haven't been uh, very expensive for the most part. It's interesting. I, I honestly think that the green emergent, or just emergent in general, is pretty attractive. Like when I was picking up my DeAndre Ayton cards, I noticed that the you know the prism's around twenty dollars, and then you can get DeAndre Ayton for a dollar emergent. You know, I mean, if DeAndre Ayton ends up being a beast this season and the Suns go ham. That could easily go up to a $12 or $15 card. And in the flip game, where the point is just to make money from point A to point B, a dollar twenty-five on Compsy to a $15 flip, and you don't want to overinvest. You don't want to have 70 of them. But you could certainly take in 20, 30, and then sell a few in lots of like four or five when they bump, and then get rid of some singly as well. This one's pretty crisp, honestly. That's that salmon ass groove right there. Harrow, Hyper, Disco, and Silver. Right, right. I'm not a big Heat fan. I know that they're a good team, and I've been a fan of Jimmy Butler. I've, I've been a fan of Jimmy Butler since he's been on the Bulls. So I like Jimmy. Uh, Harrow's okay. That snarl was kind of lame. And I call him Harrow because there's two R's in his last name. He's no hero to me. To me, a hero is like Knight Rider, you know? This is interesting. The top of this has a little bit of notching, but I think it's just kind of the card. I might just send that one in to see. Might take a little bit of a gamble on some of these, but if they do end up just being $15 submissions, I'll probably pass at the end of the day. I'll gamble on a $10 submission, but I'm, I'm not really gambling on a 15 A lot has to go right. And then here's Capo Caco. It's interesting for Capo, I've got a bunch of his Prism rookies. So here's an interesting thing, guys. 
and this is why I thought initially that hockey cards were poised to get some interest, or, you know, may maybe even not so much. Well, that one's got a real big ding on the front of it. But, uh, a ding, a jong. But the thing is, is that Prism <laughs> and Panini, they tried to get into the hockey card market, right? Like, Upper Deck has the exclusivity license, but Prism started making hockey cards. They started making uh, Prism, Obsidian, uh, Select, and they also went out of their way to get the exclusive rights to Capo Caco's autograph. So you couldn't get an autograph in any Upper Deck product. If you want a Capo Caco rookie card with an autograph on it, you have to either go get the man himself to sign it, or you have to get it from a Panini Prism pack or, or whatever else Panini has made. And if, if they didn't expect hockey to be good, then they wouldn't a try. They wouldn't be trying to get into that market. So I think that's very interesting, and it's something to pay attention to. And I, and you know, I don't know. Maybe Kako doesn't end up being very good. We'll see what's up next season. But he's still pretty hyped. His Young Guns rookie card is over thirty bucks. I just sold one the other day for thirty, and I have a bunch of his Prism rookies because I think that if he does end up being good, and the print run on those Prisms ends up being pretty low because not a lot of people bought them, well, then we're looking at a situation where maybe we've got a, a nice desirable card. So people can say, well, yeah, I got the Allure, first year Allure is a nice one, but I got Select, and I got Prism, and I've got all these. Still had all these. And this one, the edging on the top of these. Yeah, Zach Levine is a dude that's just always been kind of quality, you know, waiting in the weeds for his chance to be a primary scorer somewhere. But at the end of the day, that dude's probably stuck in a perpetual dunk contest. What are you going to do? You win some, you lose some. Uh, nah, there's like a lot of issues with these. I'm scared of sending them in for grading because of the top edging. I'm seeing up at the top of these cards, the way that they print them must just be spinning off the, you know, machine or whatever. Because right at the top, there's like a light crimp. And then there's oftentimes a print defect. But if they're all like that, then that means that they have to kind of accept that and grade around it. So we'll see. I don't know. I'm not going to be doing any $15 gambling on those, though. These are really nice red rainbows, though. I really do like these, even though they're die cut, and I'm not traditionally a die cut dude. These are pretty nice. So not going to get a lot of grades out of that stuff. We did end up with a Kale McCarr to grade. Almost done. We did finish that portion of hockey. Here of the Capo Cacos we talked about. So even though they don't have the rights to the logos, I mean, it's still a Prism Hockey rookie card. And like I said, the print run, if this guy ends up being good or, or even decent, who knows? So we're going to check these. And I think a lot of these are going to end up having centering or, or surface issues or whatever. So we'll, we'll see. Like that one, surface issue for sure. The centering on this one looks pretty off, so I'm not going to dick with that. These are just going to be raw flips, essentially. Not monkeying around with the centering on these guys. And I didn't pick these up for very much. I literally paid three bucks a piece or something. I bought like ten from one dude. Yeah, centering. That has decent centering. Centering is off on that. Uh, off on that. This is decent. And it's just a little bit too far off. This one's nice. And a little too far off on that. So yeah, centering is going to hurt these guys. Thoughts on the rookie Seku? Uh, I've got a few of his cards... You know, we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll just have to see how it shakes out. But if you feel like gambling on him and his cards are cheap, you can't really fault that. You know, if you can pick him up for a few bucks a piece, then you just grab a rack of 10 of them of select or whatever. One of my favorite things to do is to buy select cards at a 3 to 1 ratio from their Prism card. Because when the select card... Uh, goes up, it's going to go up more in proportion to a hotter prism card than a flat prism card. And what I mean by that is that if it's flat and it's three to one because there's not that much attention on it, when the prism card goes up, then the select card 
you know, a lot of the time is going to go up to a two to one ratio. So if you have a prism card at $10 and then you have a select card at $3, if the prism card goes up to $20, the select card is going to go up to $10 and not like $7. So it's going to just, the power of the three to one select is pretty hardcore. Let me see what the surface looks like on this capo caco. If that makes sense, my friends. Yeah, the, the it's a crisp border. All right. All right. I'm in on the back surface. I'm in on the... Se oh, a little bit of a mark down here. Might be able to breathe that off. Put a little heat on it. A little... Select what? Courtside? Any of them. Premier, courtside, just any any of the select rookie cards tend to hover in, in about the same ratio when there's a tension on the player, and that tends to be about half of the value of a prism, whatever the prism raw is. So if you can get it at a better ratio on a card that you think will get attention, the prism card, then you're going to get more velocity out of your, your pickup. You're basically just getting an entire increment of value for free. So it, it makes a, a very good gamble. Like right now, if you can get DeAndre Ayton cards and you can get them in the $20 range for Prism, that's pretty good. But you can if you can find the select cards and you can find them in the $6 range, that's even better. Yeah, exactly. A lot of these PSA 10s, are just overpriced for dudes that haven't proven themselves, don't have a track record, and might just suck and lose all their interest, and then you're out. And that's what I mean about splitting up your bankroll, uh, you know, in a way that's going to be beneficial to you. So if, if you put it all into one basket, so to speak, then you're more likely uh, to be at a higher risk than if you'd spread it out among other investments. So I don't really like going all in on one big card without a little bit more certainty. I'm not afraid to gamble. Like, I would gamble on a Kevin Durant 10 if I had enough funds to, you know, float that. But that's a, a more, you know, higher floor, better long term. If it sucks, Kevin Durant's value can easily come back uh, because of his resume. And if it's just some Tommy Jones or whatever, chances are Tommy Jones, when he's done, he's getting knocked out like Tommy in Rocky Five. And I'm pretty sure that dude's dead. You don't want to be that guy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Kobe White, if he can score, if he can create excitement, if he can be fancy, and if the Bulls can win. So here's a Kako out of 199. Uh, it's got some issues on the back, so I'm not going to grade it, but it is a pretty attractive card. I picked up one of each of these, again, just in case Kako got dope, and I didn't pay more than 5 bucks for that, so we're not going to grade that one. I'm going to put that back in its case. We're not going to grade it, but it is an attractive card. You ever feel like you're just one of the dudes smoking cigarettes? I mean, I don't smoke cigarettes, but hammering the pack down like that. That's what it reminds me of. And I, this is off-centered, so I'm not going to get it graded, but I, I picked up a silver for 7 bucks. So I have the Capo Caco Prism Silver Rookie. So who knows what's going to happen with that dude. And then... You know, another case for select being amazing. I mean, don't, look at this. Look at this prism hockey card right here. Right? Jaw Luminous, such a fire card. Oh, that's cool, man. And then check this out right here. Select Capo Caco Silver. That's a gorgeous card from front to back. I absolutely love these select cards. Select 2019, even in basketball... Just looks great. It's just great stuff. So let's see if this one looks good enough to grade. Oh, it's it's pretty clean, guys. This might be gradable. A little bit of edging on the top, but we've seen that every time. Oh, is that like an indentate? Oh, there's like a tiny ding on the back, like a cat just like tapped it with his claw. Man. Oh, well. Can't win them all. Still a very attractive card to pass on that all right guys now you don't have to see any more of this nonsense let's get this stack of hockey out of here get over here with uh with Braden point and jared allen and these are the guys we've got so far 
nothing too crazy. All that stuff turned into like 10 gradable cards. Let's see what we got over here. First up, we've got Tim Duncan, Bowman's best rookie card, 1997. Kind of weird. It looks like a moon just kind of coming over here to kill somebody. Let's see if we got some attractiveness on this card. So these cards have a habit of fogging up, but you can generally get rid of the fog. So you can see that there's there's a surface scratch right here. So I'll probably just sell this card raw, but you can breathe on this fingerprint shit right here and it takes a bit, but you can, you know what I'm saying? Give it a, a nice, hot, juicy breath and then clean it off with some microfiber. And as you can see, that shit comes right off clean, smooth, squeaky type clean. So you don't need Mr. Clean. All you need is a hot breath and a microfiber cloth, but there's a scratch on that so he don't make the cut. Tim Duncan, get cut. Then we have Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, 86 stickers, and I'll pick up any of these that I possibly can. Uh, this one's got a dinged corner, so this one is not going to make the, the cut. This is going to basically be held until the Magic Johnson documentary comes out, at which point I think there's going to be a lot of attention on guys like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Larry Bird, uh, you know, obviously Michael Jordan will get a bump too just because he's in there, but to a lesser extent, mostly because he already had the last dance. His cards have a higher floor anyway, and these guys haven't really had a bunch of attention focused on them. So I, I think it's going to be the Larry Bird versus Magic Johnson story, and you're going to have Julius Irving and Kareem in there. And Julius Irving's cards are cheaper than everybody else's. For some reason, the people are not down with Julius Irving. I mean, I bought his rookie card before it blew up, Ended up getting only a PSA 5 on it because it had a stain on it. Still did good. Still made almost double my money. Uh, but yeah, those cards are less expensive than everybody else's in that era. Another guy, but I don't think people are going to care so much, is Kevin McHale. So yeah, he goes along with Bird, but I don't think people are going to really care that much. He doesn't have an impressive resume or anything like that. This is actually a pretty nice Patrick Ewing it's got a little bit of a break in the inking here, but overall it should still have the ability to get a decent grade. And I'm probably going to have to clean wax off of the back of it. But generally this is nice. And, and you guys can clean if you see, you guys see the wax all over the back of it. Don't be scared if you get one of these and it's got wax. You can clean it off pretty easily. And uh, I can show you how to do that real fast. Let's take out the surface though, because the surface gets scratched really easy on these. And as you can, you probably can't see, but there are a couple of surface scratches on this and that will affect the grade more than probably anything else. They're really, they're sticklers for surface scratches. So I probably won't submit this, but if it didn't have that, I would submit it. And I can still show you guys how to clean real quick. So put it on a clean surface. It's not gonna get screwed up or whatever. You know, make sure that it's flat, crisp, whatever. This is like a food stain or something like that. Let's get this guy out of here. When Magic Johnson documentary is coming out, uh, some other time, uh, sometime next year. Yeah, James Worthy. Uh, Flippin' Steve likes James Worthy a lot. And then I want you guys to go on down to your favorite gangster. And you don't have to buy drugs, but you do have to get a handkerchief. Now, for me, I got the orange handkerchief. So you can get any of these, uh, this type of a guy right here. And then what you want to do is you want to put your finger in it. Now I know, <laughs> make sure that you've clipped your fingernail, you behemoth, and that you've got a nice flat surface on here, right? And you're going to use the same strategy that we did before. You're going to breathe on the area in question, and then you're just going to rub that shit clean. And, you know, at first I was really dainty with it, but I did get more aggressive and I've cleaned off two Michael Jordan rookie stickers and I got an 8 and an 8.5 on them from PSA. So I know that this is a reasonably good way to clean these off. So let's see. You see what it looks like now? Funky. Give them that sweet sweet rub and and breathe on him like you was about to like he was your valentine and you know you you see 
don't be afraid to put a little bit of oil up into it a little bit of that back grease as they say and then when you get close to the edge you can just push down and then like that so that you don't you know rub the edges of the card but as long as you're not rubbing this way and then running into the edge like that you're going to be fine just make sure that when you're around the edges of the card that you're only going in one direction because if you go the other direction you're screwed and that's not what you want but the ink and everything is is very uh, resilient you're not going to like get the ink off the card or screw it up and you are going to put a lot of pressure in this area so i cover the card up and make sure you keep this hand as flat as you can so make sure that this you've got sleeve on it even if you have the penny sleeve off of it and you could put a piece of paper or something down here make sure that you got that plastic over it so that you're not touching the card directly you know nothing's wrong with the surface no additional funk and uh, I'll finish cleaning this off another time but you guys can see that 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 area where it was funky has been completely cleaned off so that's the best way to clean these stickers and I always make sure to do that before I send them in. Because otherwise you'll get a stain. You'll literally get knocked down for a stain. <clears throat> Select Magical Johnson Silver Prism. Five bucks, buy it now. That's a pretty nice deal, dude, honestly. Uh, so there we've got these. Uh, unfortunately, not gradable just yet. We've got Akeem Olajuwon 87 Fleer. These are going up, guys. These cards are going up because 86 is so expensive. I picked this up online. A guy made a mistake, and he listed it for like two bucks. Now I can see that there's a, a surface blemish there. Uh, the centering is a bit off on this, and you're probably not going to get better than an eight on this one. So if it's only going to get an eight, there is a bit of discoloring on the back too, like very little, uh, and a little bit of weird, you know, surface stuff on the back. If you think that it's going to get a nine. Obviously, with these 87 Fleers, you're not going to have a chance at a 10 very often. So if you think it'll get a 9, then send it in. But if you think that there's no chance you get a 9, it's only an 8 or worse, then it's probably not worth sending in unless it's a more expensive player. And I think we're almost strictly talking about Michael Jordan for that set. And then maybe a few other cards you can, you can price check or whatever. This one's very close, too. Like, the centering's off top and bottom... It's probably not going to get better than an 8. Always look up here uh, in the name on these 87s to see if there's any print defects or any blurring. Because uh, you'll get a lot of blurring in this area. And then there... That one's... That's just on the case. Okay. But yeah, the corners are sharp. This will still sell well on eBay. You know, probably a $20 card, something like that. Uh, so I'll probably just save this, to be honest with you. I don't think I can send this in. The way that it is. Jason Tatum. I have four of these at PSA already. I have a couple floating around that aren't worth grading. And then we're going to see. I bought this one just a little while ago for like $35 uh, in the dip, so to speak. Because I think, again, Tatum is one of the safest bets that you can make right now with the highest upside. Because we already know he's a beast. And there appears to be some funk on the back of this. So I'm going to try and clean that off real quick with the microfiber and if it works cool and if it doesn't then we're just going to keep it as a raw copy put a little heat on it give it a little wipe down mm -hmm. yeah it doesn't it's weird that sometimes when you get this funky shit on the back of these cards it doesn't want to come off man it does not want to come off. It's like a calling station. You just can't get him to fold. Yeah, you're just going to have to be a raw copy, Jason Tatum. But, I mean, I think that if the $200 plus or whatever for the Prism is out of your price range, folks, you've got a lot of upside with Optic. Optic and, to a lesser extent, Select. I think Select is, is closer to, like, $60 or $70. Uh, but, yeah, I think Optic is, is quite a good value for this. And then we have some 1988 Fleer Magical Johnsons. Yes. So again, same sort of thing. I want a 9 or better. This one appears to have nice centering, but it's got a print defect up there, and it's blurry as well. It's a little bit out of focus on the, uh, on the Magic Johnson name. So because of that, this one's probably not going to get better than a 7. 
because you're going to get dinged uh, two for the print defect and then one for the blur, most likely. And then if anything else is wrong with the card on the surface or the edging or the coloring on the back, we're probably looking at a, at a seven. So that's just nonsense. That's just, you know, a raw copy, basically. Nonetheless, a beautiful card. Uh, centering on this one's pretty bad. I, I bought this one. I didn't even open it yet. It's still got its, its freezer tape on it. But you can see the centering here. I, I think I bought this for $3, which is why I got it. It'll still be a $12 card, a $15 card, whatever. Uh, especially at the height of the, of the documentary. So I'm, I'm not going to send that one in because it's off-center. This one seems pretty nice. I'm probably going to send this one in if, if it's as nice as it looks. A little bit of that uh, use your illusion purple and blue little spot right there. Uh, but for the most part, this is pretty clean. Corners look sharp. Slight bit of discoloration back there, which they'll likely forgive. Given that it's the back of the card and it's not a large amount. This one definitely has a shot at a 9. I'll take a look at the surface real quick. Make sure there's no scratching or weird dings or somebody's phone number etched into a bathroom stall on the left. Now that that's a very clean surface. So that was cool. I, I found a lot on eBay of ten. Ooh, I just I just caught a scratch in the light. You guys can't see it, but there's a scratch somewhere around there. Uh it's unfortunate. But yeah, the, the angles, man, it's all about the angles. This is still a very nice raw copy, but not going to be able to send this Magical Johnson in either. It's not going to get better than an 8. It, it is, Dean. Uh, I'm not sure when. It's supposed to be next year sometime, but they've already confirmed that a Magic Johnson documentary is coming out. And... Uh, you know, it'll definitely get... It might not get as much attention as The Last Dance did. And then this one's off-center. So, unfortunately... Did you pick my Comp C Mailman Jam City the other day? Uh, maybe. Would the other day yesterday? Was, was that the other day? It's possible. What's your eBay name, man? I'll tell you. Did it sell? Did they buy it? Oh, they bought it. They took the offer. All right. We sold a nice lot of Gary Tran Juniors. But yeah, let me let me see. It might have been you. Let me go to my purchase history here real fast. But yeah, Jam City is some very attractive stuff. The only Jam City I've bought recently, I bought two Carl Malones for $1.39 and $1.68 from Compsy. So if that was you, then yeah. And then from a different individual seller, I bought three Charles Barkley and three Hakeem Olajuwon for a total of $14. So just over two bucks a piece. You know, average two bucks a piece on those cards, essentially. Uh, I don't think you can go wrong. You found a complete set. What up, Sterling J? Of Kickstarter for $10 a card. Might have been ya. Uh, $10 a card? I don't know, dude. I think the only cards that you want from Kickstart, uh, you want Tim Duncan, obviously, and you want Kobe Bryant, and you want the Vince Carter rookie card, uh, I think Allen Iverson is the other guy that has a kickstart. But yeah, the kickstart stuff is really crazy looking. I mean, it's super flashy. And when you have the card in your hand, like, I don't, I don't think I have one on me here to show you. I have my, uh, my Tim Dunk. Well, no, maybe I do. Maybe I do have it. Let me check. My Kobe is at PSA. But I thought that I had a Tim Duncan in here that I haven't sent yet in my stash. This is like the better stuff over here. Give me just one quick second. Pack pulled, be in good shape. I got you, man, I got you. All right, yeah, so here's here's a Tim Duncan kickstart. 
just so you guys, I don't think that the, uh, you know, the video didn't really do it justice because you didn't get to see it refract and do all of its funkiness or whatever. But look at that. Look at that, man. It's crazy looking. It's all... There's like glitter and, and like a big elephant basketball. And I just, I don't know. It's just crazy looking. Kickstart. And then you have fire on the back of it for some reason. It makes no sense to me. What... Yeah, there's also going to be a Kobe, uh, Tristan. You're right. So it should be awesome. Looks nice in hand. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So you have the kickstart, and it's and it's colorful, and then for some reason, it's on fire. He's in, he's in fire. What is this? En fuego. So yeah, that's why you guys got me pimping out the kickstarts. And you can get these for three bucks, essentially, for Tim Duncan. You can find, like I said... 20 bucks is average for Kobe, a little bit more, whatever. And then Vince Carter, and that's a nice Vince Carter rookie card. And then Allen Iverson. Yeah, there you go. Garnett. Yep, that's the other guy. Kevin Garnett. Right, right, right. So I'm I'm feeling it. I'm in. I'm in. Show you guys some more cards from here in, in just a few. I'm gonna try to hurry up a little bit because I don't want to get this uh I don't want to go so long in the tooth around here. You know what I'm saying? Sweet haunt. They also have it in the top set. All right. So next we got Larry Bird, 1988 Fleer. So this first one, the centering is definitely off uh, left to right. If there's anything else wrong, looks like the corner down here is soft as well. Larry Bird, not going to make that cut. This one, however, looks pretty crisp. Nice centering on this one. The edging is good. Again, these FLIR edges in this darker area tend to be rough. Uh, no discoloration on the back. Corners look relatively sharp. This one is going to be worthing, or worth a look at the surface to see if there's any scratching. Because that will definitely get you. And it doesn't look like there's any scratching that I can see. Nice James Worthy just hanging out over here. Yeah, this is a really nice Larry Bird right here, guys. I think this one's actually going to go for grading. Definitely should have a shot at a 9. And maybe if we're lucky, it's got a shot at a 10. But I wouldn't count my my chickens before their eggs because there's, there's always... Like, they could always find something. You know what I mean? Like, if they don't want to give you a 10, they could just make any shit up about your card and say, Well, I can see a little bit of a blur over here. A little bit of this and that. So they can always just jam you down if they really want to. But yeah, this one is going to make the cut. Larry Bird, you're going to PSA, buddy. And we got Akeem Olajuwon. How baller is it to just add an H to your name? I mean, dude was Akeem in 86, Akeem in 87, Akeem in 88, and then bam, he just threw an H on his name for no damn reason. I'll be Hakeem, thank you. Like, imagine if you was a medieval weapon and you wanted to be a computer guy. You could change your name from Axe to Hacks. Just add an H. Right now, my name's Chris. It won't work for me. <laughs> Chris. But maybe it'll work for one of you. You know what I mean? I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. Let's we'll see. Let's see if we got some good surface right here. Come on. Akeem, can you give me some good surface, buddy? Hey, the surface looks clean on this card, guys. The centering is very nice. Uh, top to bottom, there's a tiny bit of off to it. Again, if you look at the card this way, you can see just a tiny bit off top to bottom. But I'm, I'm pretty happy about the condition of this one. And I think we could send this in and, and get at least a 9. I mean, it has a shot at a 9. Oh, oh is, that a, is that a ding on the... Is that edge? Oh, no, no, don't tell me. Don't tell me the edge. Oh, there's a ding on the edge. Dun, dun, dun. All right. Yeah, it did look good, but then this other side kind of jammed me down. Now, this one's too off-centered, uh, right to left, so we're just going to pass on that. But nonetheless, I do think that these 88 Fleers are kind of like the last stop for uh, going up in value. I think the 89 Fleers start to get kind of eh. I mean, they're okay, but I do think that these specifically, 87 and 88, have a decent amount of room to grow. And 
Isaiah Thomas is a little bit too off centered, and there's a bit of kind of breaks in the ink up there. So I'm not gonna not gonna do that one. Too off centered on that Isaiah Thomas. Uh, Clyde Drexler, bit of a print defect up at the top left here. Kind of some dark speckling and then off centered. So I'm not gonna send that one. Surefire way to get a PSA eight. And this one just has like a straight up ding on the side of it. So can't do anything with that. Again, some more speckling. That's why it's so difficult to get these 88 Fleers in good condition because there's so many weird print defects with all the color and the ink. I mean, they're beautiful cards. They're one of my favorite sets, so I'm probably slightly biased to them. But um, yeah, there's just too much of this like dark speckling and a little bit off center there. Uh, Barkley's got a big chunk missing off center. It, good luck finding a Kareem Abdul-Jabbar card that's centered because most of these are off center. <laughs> whether it's this or whether it's another, it's an 86, it's the sticker. I'm probably gonna put Kareem or Carl Malone in a video at some point in the future, guys. A little little hint for you. I think that with his resume, there's just no way that long term his cards can stay as cheap as they are. I mean. This dude is an absolute monster, and he's got multiple MVPs. And yeah, he never won a championship, but when you're just looking at raw stats and velocity, uh, Carl Malone was one of the best, so I think he, he might be underappreciated. Then we've got Excalibur. I think these cards are pretty attractive. This is out of 199, 2015 Lillard. You know, just pick this up for a few bucks, three bucks, four bucks, something like that. They're not expensive. They might be more now. Ooh, a little bit of a surface funk on this one. I think I have another one that I can send in. Ugh. It's difficult to get cards that you can grade, guys. I mean, even this is off-center, the Net Marvel. I might just send it in anyway, because I've seen some tens come from uh, bad centering. But just uh, in general, ah, uh, this is there's a there's like a little ding on the on the corner too. Yeah, we'll have to hold that one and, and flip it raw. These are pretty attractive right here. Again, it's one that you're going to have to clean off. The Bowman's Best with like the little sunshine ray. I have a Michael Jordan at PSA right now. Uh, you kind of have to clean the surface off pretty good on this one. So I'll have to do that at another time uh, so I don't waste you guys' time. Ding on the corner. Not going to grade that one anyway. Uh, and I got that in a collection. Then we have Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and this is a very, very good looking, again, these Crusade cards, they didn't just used to be in the draft picks, like, why are they all draft picks now? I actually like Panini Crusade, Excalibur, whatever, now we don't get any medieval looking shit unless it's in some draft collegiate bullshit that you guys are basically scamming people with, man, nobody cares. But this, Los Angeles Lakers... This is beautiful. Look, we got a pleat right here like it was a mattress in the bedroom or the seat at a club or something. About to pop bottles with Kareem Abdul. And the cool thing about this one is that it's numbered 1 of 149. So how cool is that? I've got the first one ever made. And this is a non-fungible token. No one else can ever have the first one of these ever made. So if you guys haven't checked out NBA Top Shot... That's kind of what I'm talking about. Yeah, there's a little bit of wear up at the top here. Well, this is kind of sensitive. Kareem, are you a sensitive type little bitch or something? See if I can give you a little rub down, baby. Maybe, 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 heck, you, maybe cheer you up a little bit. Yeah, no. I don't know. I mean, this one's cool enough anyway because it's one, so I don't have to send that one in. And yeah, yeah, yeah. You got some butlers. These are the Magical Johnsons that I remember looking at before. And I think these were centered enough to get in. That one's definitely not getting in. That corner. I believe this one will go. Centering is nice. Not a lot of wear. I'll check the surface later. You're probably going to make the cut. What about you, good sir? Nope, ding over there on the jagged side. 
And again, I, I got in really early on these guys. I only paid a dollar fifty a piece. I found a guy who had a bunch of them and bought a rack of twenty. Bought a few from somebody else. That one's not going to make the cut. But it is very difficult to get this shit graded. So uh, whenever I made that video, the PSA tens of this immediately got bought for one twenty-five a piece, which I regret kind of not buying one of them myself. I should have. Obviously, I can handle that. So I, I should have bought one, but I didn't. And they all sold. I didn't. Didn't expect them to sell so fast, to be honest with you. Alright, so two of these guys can go, and then the others can go to hell. How about this one? This one looks pretty crisp for the most part. That'll probably go as well. Alright, so we got three Magical Johnson Chrome, first Chromes. What up, Lamello? I have so many high end cards, I want to get PSA graded. Too scared to send in the mail from Australia. Yeah, that's a scary spot to be in, man. I don't know what I would do in that spot. I mean, if there's no safe way to do it, I guess I would just travel to America, submit them, and leave. You know, maybe use the bathroom at one of those, like, outhouse stalls at a construction site so you get the full American experience. Go drink enough beer to shit yourself at Buffalo Wild Wings and go home. I think these were all clean enough. We looked at these last time. These are the Magical Johnson uh, first year prisms and yeah, these are all gone. I remember we, we looked at those and one of them wasn't good enough out of the four that I ended up with and the other three were good. Then we have a crisp and clean uh, Chris Bosch rookie card waiting for that Hall of Fame announcement. I know that one was good. And then I got these two Darius Basleys or Basleys, whatever you say his name is. Rated Rookie, Optic, out of the pink pack or whatever. And then Don Russ, uh, number 98 out of 99. And those are pretty attractive, even though they're they're paper Don Russ and they're a little low end. They're still pretty decent. So these are kind of attractive cards. And, you know, he's had some hype. And he's a rookie that I like for next year. So I don't mind that. I'll, I'll send those in for sure. Let's see what else we got in this weirdo stack. We've got some old... Again, Bowman's best, Shaquille O'Neal. I always thought this was an attractive card. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, I think this one's pretty attractive. This one looks pretty clean on the back. We'll check out the surface. It's probably not worth more than 50 or 60 bucks. So if this has literally anything wrong with it, I'm not going to send it in. But if it's like super gem minty, fresh and crisp, nothing wrong with the surface, which it looks like is the case, then uh, I'm in on sending that one in. Because they are attractive cards. I have a bunch of the other guys that are popular as well. The Drexlers and the Olajuwans. But this one has a scratch. On the side. Is that a scratch or just some funk? And this one's kind of dangerous. Uh, I might revisit it. But I don't think that's going to be the case. I'll have to look under the microscope. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna put it in the stack for now and check it out later. Then we have the 1997 Topps Chrome. Not a bad looking shack right here. Off centered as shit on the back though, so that's unfortunate. No print lines. Corner seam sharp. A little bit too much funk on the front. Let's see if I can clean it off. Yeah, the surface is a little bit too dirty on this one. Nonetheless, it's a pretty attractive card. It's a nice shack. 97 chrome. So we'll, we'll leave that one out. I don't think we can get Iverson graded. I don't. I just don't think it'll be worth it. But there's a, a chrome Iverson. <laughs> one of the only rookie cards I like in... Uh, in Chronicles, I like the way these Flux cards look. So I was going to maybe send this Brandon Clark in for grading if it's good enough. Nope, big print line across the back. But I think this is one of the only cool looking cards that come out of Chronicles. And that's basically because of the washed out weird way they have it set up. Color wise. There's a Kendrick Nunn, which probably isn't worth sending in, but who knows. A little bit too funky on the surface on that one. 
This might be a good one, but it'll probably be good raw anyway. And that is a year two Dwayne Wade. Oh, that's got a surface blemish. Yeah, still nonetheless, uh, year two tops chrome Dwayne Wade. You guys can see the, the scratch on that one, right? Like right there. Ninety four hoops big numbers rainbow dollar box at a local shop. Hey yeah, send it in, dude. If it's in nice shape, you can't go wrong. Yeah, this is probably gonna have some surface issues too, just the regular base version of it. Uh second year Dwayne Wade cards are, are not bad. And I got these. I sold a bunch of Anthony Simons the other day, but I kept a bunch of select. I, I mean, look at how gorgeous the select stuff looks. Hello. How's it going over there? Premier level. Hmm? Yeah, I'll, I'm done in a second. No, it's okay. It's getting close to midnight anyway. Yeah, it's 11.06. It's getting close, the midnight hour. Yeah, a little bit of edging up at the top. Probably gonna have to pass on that one. AJ? What? All right, let's see. For some reason in the Vegas heat, these cards kind of stick a little bit on occasion. Bust or star? Uh, I like him. I think he's got potential. I think that he's going to have to be traded uh, somewhere else. I think he's a good trade piece for the for the Blazers. I mean, unless they want him as a sixth man or something. They've got a lot of talent, but they don't really need another guy that can shoot. They've got Lillard. They've got C.J. McCollum. They've got Gary Trent Jr. who can play D and 3. He's D3, you know. So do they really need Anthony Simons as well? I mean, yeah, sure, if you want him to start alongside Gary Trent Jr. But I think he's a guy that they could move and he could get good minutes somewhere else. I think he's a good player. He's decent anyway. Yeah, this one's close. I have some colored tricolors in there. I, I'm, I'm going to set that one aside as well. Yeah, I'm going to have to take a look at those. Yeah, I'm going to set these aside and take a look at all these Simons. These are probably not going to be great. These are really nice, though, right? These flash prisms, rated rookie flash prisms. What's the ROI when buying $1,000 worth of RAR cards from eBay to grade? I mean, that's just such an open-ended question, Eric. I mean, there's no way that, like, if you, what you're telling me is that you have $1,000 and you're thinking about investing it in cards to grade and you want to know how much money you can get back versus doing something else with your money. And I would tell you that you could pick a catalyst and if that catalyst is next season, then pick guys that you think are going to have a high floor so that when you get the cards back, even if you get a mid to lower grade, like an eight, then you're still going to be able to make a profit and then go from there. But I would say in general, you know, you're looking to get probably two and a half to three X on the low end from your thousand dollars. Otherwise, it's probably not worth your time. So it really just kind of depends. Like when Damian Lillard uh, started popping off, I was lucky in that I was already a fan from watching him for years. And I bought a bunch of his hoops rookies for a hundred bucks a piece, PSA 10 graded like seven of them and i sold them for up to 400 bucks a piece i still have one left that you can kind of see behind me on the on the thing like right there so i i did really well right there and it only took me a month or less because you know everything went crazy and it all fell in my favor so you have to consider the conditions of what is going to happen when it's going to happen how long it's going to happen for and then have your cards back in a specific window so let's say that you think X player is going to be good, but then he ends up sucking, you know, after being good at the start of the season. So he got his jump like you thought he would, but then he started to average out and he started to suck. And then you got your cards back from PSA when they were on the low end. 
So it, it really just kind of depends. I would say the vintage cards are probably your safest bet because they're better in lower grades and you never know what you're going to get when you're buying on eBay. So if you buy like a bunch of Bo Jackson rookie cards and you pay eight bucks a piece for them and then you grade them for 10 bucks, not only are you going to get back your money, you're probably going to get a two and a half to three X multiplier after fees because even a low end like a PSA 9 Bo Jackson Don Russ baseball card sells for 35 or 40 dollars. So I mean, you look for high floor and then not a lot of variance and then think about the timing of everything. <clears throat> Yeah, that's true. That is a lot of Magical Johnsons. Absolutely. Uh, these have print lines, so we can't do much with them. I think Brandon Clark is a guy that you guys should be looking at. I think he's pretty, probably pretty overlooked for the most part, since the Grizzlies already have John ja Morant and everything, and Jaron Jackson Jr. Uh, Brandon Clark might even be a guy who gets traded because they just don't have enough minutes for him. Like he can play better than what he showed. And if you, you know, listen to interviews. When I was researching Brandon Clark before I bought his cards, I listened to a bunch of interviews, and he's a pretty intelligent kid. He's down to earth, you know, and he's a good basketball player, and he's driven to be better. Uh, so I would like to see more playtime uh, for Brandon Clark. So I have some of his rookie cards. That one I can't send in. So there's a surface issue on the back. I mean, but but look at the select. Look at the select versus the prism. I mean, that's a nice card. Hi, what are you saying? You got news for us or something? Not for the stream, but for you. Maybe. Has it got anything to do with Boba Fett? No, it has to do with activity on the strip. Oh. Violence? Yeah, but you're a, a lot closer to our house. Oh, really? Okay. What? Are you serious? Another one? I, I, did you see where I said? Yeah. Where we were last night. Yeah. Okay. All right. Isn't that crazy? Yo, Vegas is savage, dogs. <laughs> uh, you're welcome, Eric. You're welcome, man. What's up, Doug the Pug? How you doing? What up, Venom? What's going on, man? Been a while since I've seen you, Doug. Yo, I still got that little Tron dude that you sent me all those years ago, man. Just so I let you know that he's still alive and well, chilling in a box somewhere, just hanging. Yeah, exactly. This guy's not good enough to grade. I'm probably going to show you guys the cool cards and then just wrap it up for tonight. But yeah, I got a bunch of these Brandon Clarks. They go for about 15 bucks. I got in around 10, which is about the best you're going to do for a solid, you know, prism rookie for a basketball player. So I can't complain about that. But I do really like the select. That's right. Half of the Billy Bundle, too. You know that. I got that donut scarf around here somewhere. I don't use that to clean cards or anything, but I still have it. You're not really into the NFL, but Bo Jackson seemed like a multi-sport all-star. Yeah, he's awesome, man. Yeah, yeah, Cam Reddish, I'm with you. I'm with you. But yeah, Bo Jackson was amazing. Even if you didn't like the Raiders or whatever, Bo Jackson, you just can't. And, and he wasn't a juicer. That's the thing about Bo that's good. Look at that Rui, guys. I wish I had a few more of these. Now they're probably 12 or 15 bucks. Let's go look it up. How much is Rui? Rui Hachimura 2019 select. What's the number? If you put the number on the back of the card in, it's a lot easier to look it up. $9. So, I mean, look at that, guys. You can get this Rui Select card right here for nine bucks. I mean, for a, a dude that's the first Japanese-born NBA player that has potential, I mean, the Wizards pretty much suck. Well, they do. Uh, and let's see what his prism is going for. It's got to be more than that. So if this is more than $27, then we're in a good spot to buy Select for $9. Let's check it out, guys. You can get that all-American taste. You know, maybe if I was buying a cheeseburger, I'd be in on that. That's one thing I hate about looking up Prism, because it's always like you got this one to contend with, and that one, and there's Emergent, and Emergency. I mean, it's just nonsense. Yeah, there's Emergent. There's all this collegiate draft trash. It's just, it's junk wax. We live in a world of junk wax with some nice stuff on the fringe. 
What's the number of that card? I don't, if you go to auctions, you'll see the number a lot faster. Or if you check out... Alright, so let's see what's up right here. Show me the money, Jerry. No, not mosaic dummy. Okay, there's a prism, and it's number 255. Alright, buy it now. 255. What's the multiplier? $13? What? Are you serious? That one's from Canada, but it says read me. This one might not even be a real card. Oh, he's got two available. Off-centered is all hell. We just sold a record. I think we just sold a Prince record, honey. No. Yeah, we did. We just sold Prince self-titled for $29.99. And we also sold... We also sold... Cancel it. We also sold Gary Trent Jr. for 80 bucks for a lot of a few of his cards. While you were gone. Yeah, so guys, that's actually a very favorable multiplier in favor of the Prism Hachimura. So that's interesting. What's the emote tag for a Surge bottle? I don't know, man. I've put that life away. <laughs> it ain't like that anymore. Yeah, that's Twitch. And honestly, dude, maybe one of these days I'll get you and Maury and all those dummies and then we'll go over and watch the old videos just for the hell of it. Because the Playboy magazine story is there, the Surge Bottle is there, the Default Stroke is there, all that debauchery is all there. God, what a sordid agenda on my Twitch channel. All right, guys, let me show you a few other guys, and then we'll bounce out of here for this evening. Because I know you guys want to see the juicy stuff that's definitely being sent in. Uh, but we did end up with a pretty decent stack to choose from, so I'll probably at least get another 20 cards out of here or something. That's not bad. And we're sending in a nice bulk-ass order for my bulk-ass. The Papaya Pal. Yeah, papayapal.com was going to be the dopeness, man. The hell with paypal.com. What about papayapal.com? Long story, guys, but I've been streaming on Twitch TV since 2013 as a partner. Used to play a bunch of video games like Diablo 3 and Path of Exile. And, uh, you know, we had a lot of fun there back in the day. So this is the stuff that's definitely making the cut, guys. This is already in the mix, in the box. We got Garbage Pail Kids. Those guys are awesome. We did get a nice Magical Johnson first year tops chrome refractor with jersey number on the back 932 and i picked this up for 36 bucks and it looks like it'll probably hit a psa 9 so that might actually get sent in at the end of the day i'll pay 15 for that one speaking of eddie murray rookie cards i picked up this nice one pretty pretty good shape there sharp corners decent centering if we're lucky we'll get an eight on that sharp on the back when you're when you're looking for 1978 tops cards they have an orange border so always look at the back to see how much wear is on the corners on the back of the card because a lot of the time the backs of the cards are white or they're a color where it doesn't really matter uh, but these really matter like black bordered cards so always check out the back but that was a nice pickup for 15 bucks i bought that for 15 dollars log out macro oh god what year is it uh, I think it's 2020, but I could be wrong. Are you saying true base prism, ungraded, $13? Yeah, I'm saying that Rui Hachimura, right now, 2019 rookie card prisms are roughly, looks like 13, 15. Uh, it goes up fast, so there's not that many of them, but there's a few available at that you know $13 price point. There's a $10 best offer. Uh, that's a pretty good price, honestly. That's If you guys were smart, you'd go and buy them now, because if not, I might buy them later. Because if the if the you know select is $9, then the other one is only $15, and that means there's a pretty good ratio. It should be about $18. So it's a 4 or $5 uh, downswing there, if the prism is average, or the select, rather. Then we've got these Magical Johnsons, which will definitely be sent in. Most of these have very nice centering couple of them are a little off, but the corners are sharp. I paid roughly 35 bucks each for these. This is probably the worst one centering-wise. It also has a little bit of edging down here, but I think I only paid like 25 for this one. I remember one of them was slightly cheaper. 
and one of them was slightly more expensive. This one has a print defect up there, but it's still very crisp, sharp, nice centering otherwise. So these Magic Johnson cards are the ones that you, you really want to be picking up. Uh, they've been very hot, and it's going to be difficult to get them cheap. But, you know, when his documentary comes out and the 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 rookie card with him and Julius Irving and Larry Bird, that thing is already out of price range for a lot of people. This is going to be the next card that people turn to. So if you're looking for that, you know, second from Prism, whatever, uh, this is going to be it. And some people don't like those little three-piece cards to the biscuit. So, yeah, this is the, definitely the Magic Johnson card that you want to be picking up if you can find them. But I'm trying to find them. So get off my magical Johnson, sir. There's a Kim Olajuwon sticker. Uh, very sharp, but slightly off-center. Hopefully we can get an 8 on that. That would be great. Magical Johnson stickers. Sharp. Decent. Same thing here. Larry Bird. I think I showed you guys a lot of these before, so we won't spend too much time on it. This is definitely the cleanest, crispest that I've seen of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. I'm hoping that this gets a nine. I don't think it's got a shot at a 10, uh, but I mean, the corners are super sharp. The centering's good. There's no discoloration on the back. Even the back centering is extremely nice. You know, the edges are clean. Like this is just, this is a gorgeous Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. I paid 25 bucks for it. And we got Giannis, picked up that guy. Should be a nine or a 10. Some John Stockton's, you know, try to get eight or better on those guys. Paying, you know, somewhere in the $15 range for them. 20 bucks if I have to. Uh, there are the Scotty Pippins that I'm going to send in. I'm just hoping for an eight or better on these. This one might not because it does have an edge ding. So I might have to just sell that one raw. Another Kareem Abdul-Jabbar that will make the cut, but still off-centered like it always is. Slightly worse condition, Kareem Abdul. Magic Johnson, got a PSA 8 Magic Johnson back there, uh, and a couple more at PSA. This one's really crisp other than the centering. It's probably a 7 with the centering. Uh, Michael Jordan, 88 Fleer, gorgeous card there. Picking up nice Kareem, or uh, yeah, Kareem and Julius when I can, so I've got these Julius Irvings I paid 8 bucks a piece for. They're really sharp. Obviously the centering is tough on this set, but I'm happy with it. Irving, there's the Kareem's, and that's probably about it, guys. I got a couple other, there's nothing too fancy, you know, just shiny stuff. Russell Westbrook, rookie, there's that Duncan kickstart, Jamal Murray, rookie, and, and then tricolor select, because I think that's a very attractive card. I guess that Trout's pretty nice, that's like a 150 bucks graded 10 or something. Just some funk. So that's it guys. I'll take questions for about a minute if you guys have anything that you would like to ask. Otherwise, I'm going to say good night, farewell, uh, Arriva Derche, L get the hell out of my streamo and all that. Random Kobe is dead. His cards are a lot now. Yeah. It's true. But yeah, that's what I'm going to cobble together my next PSA submission. Love you, man. No question. Take it sleazy. No, man. You got to give it sleazy, not take it sleazy. Jeez, man. What kind of guy is you? A girl? Let me get this out of the way. Move these cars. I got stacks upon racks. I'll just grab a box. All right. I think that's going to be it for me tonight, guys. Hope you've enjoyed the stream. And, yeah, uh, look for more video content. Like I said, if you're looking... Uh, let me just drop more links here. If you have stuck with us and you're looking to either play poker online, buy stuff from our eBay store, join us in our Patreon group. You can probably make money from that. Uh, whoa, whoa. They don't want me to send that many links. They're just, they're, they're telling me not. But my, my mouse is telling me yes. All right, hold on. What? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right, there's the Patreon. <laughs> It's like, what? There's our social media and our eBay store. Here's NBA Top Shot. You guys better go check that out because it's awesome. Venom, if you haven't seen that yet in Mori Stream, go check that out, dude. Uh, yeah, Twitch, whatever else, this and that. Okay, 
And if you guys want to join us on Discord, just the basic Discord, I have a special one for Patreon members only. Uh, but here is the basic one. You guys are welcome to join, chill and chat, all that kind of stuff. All right, I'm out of here, guys. Have a wonderful evening. Uh, thanks for hanging out with us. I hope you guys have a wonderful night. I'll catch you on the flip 